oh, alchemist or gunsmith, I get wondrous inventions. Where were the wondrous? Correct. I'm trying to see if any of the wondrous inventions are like healing related or could like fill a niche. Uh, the artificer like itself can fill that role. Or not the other, the, uh, the alchemist can fill that role. Because uh, uh, you can start casting spells into items. Oh, okay. So I can make healing potions. I believe so. Let me read through this. Formula's healing. Yep, so the healing drought. You draft, draft, healing draft you can make. It's a draught. Or draft, really? Draft, yeah. It? Correct. That, that is so weird. Anyway, yep. healing draft. So let's see, 1d8. Okay. Super strong early. But they have to drink it as an action as opposed to me throwing it in their face. Uh, yes, but you can also just use these between battles. Right. Uh, but I was looking at the alchemical acid and then the healing draft, and I was thinking, why can't I just throw it in their face? Uh, because they have to drink it. The topical potion. Uh, they have to drink it. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Let's see. It's it would be used out. as, like, a regular healing potion. They have to drink it. Um, I would actually be really useful because it looks like you can make a, a lot of good stuff. Uh, wouldn't boost the challenge rating too hard, and nope. I could at least provide healing and fire and acid and all these other things. And you still get your mechanical thing at level six. Riding dire wolf. Sure, why not? Okay, uh, so sure. Do you want to settle on Alchemist and start rolling? You can decide on uh, what your race will be as well. Uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be Gnome. Okay. Let's see. Do that. I cannot remember Choice. what his name was going to be. Well, you can worry about that later. You can start doing stats, though. Um, okay, okay, okay. So how do I do the rolls? I mean, is there actual dice? I'm going to show you. Uh, well, it's all in this, so I'm assuming, yeah, you're in here. So, are you in the chat log? If you go to the top right, there's chat, and then journal, and then chat. compendium. So, if you go to chat, and then down at the bottom here, if you type in slash roll, you can slash roll, like, let's do 1d6. There you go, I rolled 1d6, six. and I rolled a 6. Get 13. So, correct. So, the way we're going to roll this is you're going to go slash roll... Uh, 4d6 d1, which means you roll 4d6 and drop the lowest. And so you're going to do that six times. 4d6 d1. Okay. Let me copy paste this here. Yep. One. So 11, 11, 15, Four. 16, Five. 14, 11. Okay. Yeah. Six and the to races gnome correct right not too bad i guess force gnome or rock gnome force gnome gets a bonus to dex whereas rock gnome gets a bonus to constitution I... rock gnomes have Tinker as well, which might be really useful to you. There's also Artificer ro lore. I am going to go yeah. Rock Gnome because that makes more sense. Don't here. really need decks, or especially alchemists don't necessarily need decks, right? Yes. So if you are a gun artificer, I would suggest decks because all of your shots are based on decks. Right, of course. So, but if you're going regular the uh, alchemist route, yeah, I think Rock Gnome makes sense here. Um, okay, so I'm going to be going Rock Gnome. Mm -hmm. What are my stats as Artificer, by the way? It's what, Wisdom? Yeah, let me go back to that class real quick. Oh, let's see. Well, if you... Combining exotic reagents to produce a variety of materi materials, healing drafts. First level. Mm, let's see. 
Alchemist Satchel. Trying to see what you can do at first level that would make sense here. You have three alchemical formulas. Hmm. If an alchemical formula option requires a saving throw, the DC is 8 plus proficiency plus intelligence, so much like a spell. Okay, so I got it. So, so intelligence is important. Hands. Yeah, possibly. It depends if you need to throw things. On impact, it detonates in a 5-foot radius. Yeah, so it's it's telling you because because you have this alchemist pack, you can basically throw things at thirty feet and be able to hit it. It just affects the area. So here's and what else are you proficient in? Um, hand axe, light hammer, or simple weapons. And you have a crossbow. Okay, so it, it depends on what you want to do. You're not going to be able to throw these formulas every turn, right? Because you, I think you're limited on. How many you can make. That's your little bag of reagents. Create a variety of concoctions. After you use one of the potions, the bag reclaims the materials. That's super fucking weird, but okay. Just magic. Great. Okay. But I still keep the materials for it. Yep. So you get to make one of each of these things. And then after you use them... Reagents. I never have to go back... Oh, I never have to go back correct. in town to remake those things. Yes. If okay. you lose the satchel, you'll have to re remake it. But if you don't lose the satchel, uh, then every time you use one of these, if it's already made, the ingredients just go back into your pouch. But how do you... Okay. Pulls out the exactly the right materials you need for your alchemical formula options. X is my attacking stat, int is my casting stat, and... Yes. Yes. And then I could put one of those 11s in Constitution, then get plus 12, or then get 12, which I guess gives me a, a plus one bonus. Yeah. Um, be 16 in int, just so I have good casting, and then 15 in dex, so that when I am able to raise an ability point, I can just put one in dex and uh, put it straight to 16. You will have that option, yeah. Additionally, remember, your gnome bonus, I think, is intelligence and constitution. So I think you get a plus two to int and plus one to con as a rock gnome. Yeah, then I would definitely want to put that 16 in int. Yep. Get your plus four bonus right away. Uh, plus one in constitution from rock gnome, so... Yeah, because no matter what, I'm getting a plus two to either Constitution or Int, and so it makes more or Constitution or Dex, and so it makes more sense to put the 15 in Dex and the 14 in Constitution, or no, the sure. 12. Although, at all. So but any of the 11s, if 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 you put an 11 in in one of your bonus slots, you'll bump it up to 12, right? Which gets you the plus plus one. Probably uh, if you. You have a 15 that you can bump up to a 16, which is plus 3 instead of plus 2. Uh, the 16, or no. So if you put, let's say, so if you put your 15 in con, you'd get it as a plus, it would get an automatic plus 1, so it becomes a 16, and you would get a plus 3 modifier. So you have, your, your two options here are constitution and intelligence, right? Where you get your bonuses. But I mean, the 18, the 16 is going into int because I want sure. the... Go ahead and uh, put that in there, then. Uh, dexterity that is going to be it's going to be eighteen. Yep. Okay. Or, um, wisdom is basically a dump stat for me, right? Uh, I believe so. Yes. There it is. Wisdom. All right, I searched on wisdom and didn't find a single thing. Uh, what are you What are you looking for? Uh, that website that you uh, sent to me. Um, just looking at that. Oh, oh, you're trying to see if anything pops up as wisdom. 
Well, okay, so here, let's put it this way. Your two saving throws you're proficient in are constitution and intelligence. The uh, skills you're proficient in all have to do with intelligence or... Wait, I think nature's in here, though. Nope, nature's intelligence, religion, and sleight of hand, which I think is dex. Yep. So it's either intelligence uh, or dex. Well, for then your skills. Is, uh, definitely a dumb stat. Yep. Holy shit. I lie. How you doing? Thank you for following. So sweet. <laughs> uh, okay, so that works for me. Do you know where you want to put the, the other stat numbers yet? Um, sort of. Well, let's see. I think... Um... because like that important aside from you know surviving so well let me see yeah, constitution's pretty important especially at level one yeah um let me in uh, guild wars 2 i just need to get to a safe spot okay. okay so charisma also looks like a dumb stat granted having a nice charisma will be okay but uh, strength 11. Okay. Yeah, I think I was going to do 15 for dex, so that next time I... Good. Because if I do 15 for dex, I can bump it up to 16 when I get another ability point, but then... If I put 14 in Constitution, then it gets bumped up to 15, and more than that. Um, I'll do the 15 in Constitution, so that bumps it up to 16, and then 14 in Dexterity, and then I'll just bump up Dexterity for my ability scores the next several times. 15. Well, okay, so just, just so you're aware... Uh, at your ability score upgrades, you do have options for taking feats instead. So you might not want to do those. I mean... Just just as a heads up. When it comes to it. Well, regardless, in terms of min-maxing, I either get two stats that are at plus two, or I get one stat at plus three and one stat at plus two. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, you don't have to min-max is all I'm saying. I mean, do what you want, but I always you don't have, have to. Min-max. Okay. Consider the dire wolf thing, if I can somehow finagle a stronger monster to act as my mount. No. <laughs> we'll see when we get there. It's level six. I'm planning ahead, though. Um, all right, so that's that. Okay. I'm going in the wrong direction. Ooh, okay. Yeah. There we go. All right. Anyway, what's next? Okay. Um. So your saving throws that you're proficient in are Constitution and Intelligence. Go ahead and mark both of those with the check boxes. Constitution and Intelligence. Yep. Your skills you can choose three from Arcana, Deception, History, Investigation, Medicine, Nature, Religion, and Sleight of Hand. Would be um, under the artificer read. thing, so you can read that. I'm sorry, what? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I see your little thing lighting up, but I can't hear your voice, so I'm not sure what's happened. Okay. Uh, can oh, you... there you are. Okay. So you said I can only choose three. You choose three from that list. Gives me a bonus point or what? I'm sorry, what? 
gives me a bonus point. It adds your proficiency bonus to it. Um, which is two. Well, are you still under the artificer class on the website? Um, you know, on the web page. Yes. I uh, yes, I am. Okay, so where it says under saving throws, proficiencies, skills, choose three from that list. Uh, saving throws, constitution, intelligence. Okay, three, skills. Uh, let's see, arcana. Probably arcana, deception, history, investigation, medicine, nature, religion, sleight of hand. Hmm. And what happens? Okay. What happens? Uh, I'm thinking. Okay. Determine uh, how I do with like magical items and whatnot. Mm hmm. That seems like an easy one to bump. In the history, I don't think it's that important. What does investigation do? Um, so let's say you want to find something in a specific location and that you would investigate that thing to see what it is or what it holds or if there's something hidden or et cetera. Oh, it's, it's so the way to, the way to look at it is per perception is to notice something like you see a bird or you see something in a distance or you notice some footprints. Investigation is to tell you what those things are. It would be, did I... Find this footprint and I can tell what size it is or what animal it came from or whatever. Hmm. Investigation gives you the details. Um, and nature is like nature lore. Uh, let's see. Uh, probably sleight of hand, just in case. One more. I don't know. What are the odds anyone else is going to choose history? I don't know. I'll take history because anything else just doesn't seem all that interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Your hit points at level one will be eight plus your constitution modifier. So you'll have 10 starting hit points. 11. I'm sorry? Aim. Oh, I'm sorry. I read dexterity. Excuse me. So yes, 11. Right. 11. 11. Okay. Uh, your current will also be 11. Obviously, you're not hurt when we start this. Okay, uh, your hit dice, just so you know what it is. Hang, hang on. Because we can't select your race, I need to find something that's similar. Pick the race. Yeah, hang on. Or the class, I'm sorry. Um, leave. Monk has the same one. Don't worry, I can change your stuff, so just don't worry if stuff starts changing. Uh, yeah, so your hit dice is 1d8. So just leave it as monk because it's the same hit dice. So just as what that means being, if you see the middle box where it says hit dice. Uh, yes. If you click that, that, the word hit dice. Yeah, so it shows you, okay, you're rolling 1d8 plus your constitution. So this is if you take a short rest, uh, at level 1 you have... Uh, no, not 1d8. This is the total how many you have. By selecting monk, it is automatically set it as 1d8. Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna... You have one total. Um. Okay, as a gnome, your speed is 25. Because you got short legs. Sure. And now we will go down to some equipment stuff. Okay, not monk. Where's artificer? Okay, your starting equipment is a hand axe and a light hammer, 
or two simple weapons. Uh, these simple weapons can be found if you go to rules in the website and then go to uh, weapons under equipment on the left hand side and scroll down it'll show you a big old table mm. Rolls, equipment weapons here we go so i can pick two simple weapons yeah so you have an option here you can take the the hand axe and light hammer or two simple weapons Let's see. That is simple. There they are. Okay. Um, Uh, I suppose I take a crossbow. Oh, you get the crossbow automatically, so don't worry about that. You get a light crossbow and 20 bolts, regardless. Uh, let's see. In that case, I think I will go with a spear for poking. And a mace for smashing. Very good. All right. Uh, crossbow. Oh, hang on. So before you just start typing these in, if you go to the compendium and go in the search, here, I'm going to go ahead and clear these real quick. Um, type in crossbow in the compendium. The compendium. Where's the compendium? Okay, so at the top right, where it, there's this I. That's called the compendium. So if you go in the search bar and type in crossbow. Okay. And it should pull up light crossbow. Click and drag that into the item area. And so now it will populate your attacks and spell casting as well. I suppose bolts, and I'm getting 20 of them. Yep. Um, what else was I doing? Oh, yeah. Mace. Um, and what was the other thing I picked? Oh, yeah, spear. Spear. All right. Okay. So now you have that equipment. Let's see what right. else you get. Uh, you get scale mail or studded leather armor. Let me see what armor class that sets you at. Is it medium? Uh, yes. It is medium armor. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's a scale mail or studded leather. Scale mail is fourteen plus your dex. Studded leather is twelve plus your dex. Like studded it, leather is better. Uh, I'm sorry. What? Better. Why is studded leather better? Fourteen plus dex. Studded leather is twelve plus dex. Scale, scale mail is fourteen. 14 plus dex, but it gives you disadvantage on your stealth checks. Mm, I don't have stealth, is it? Well, I guess I do. All right, fine. I'll go with studded leather. Okay. So same thing. Go to the compendium and then uh, click and drag studded leather over. Nice. <laughs> and that should auto-update your armor class. Mail mail 14 plus dex. Your dex is a modifier of 2. It did not update. Fine. We'll just go ahead and put that there. Okay. They did a bunch of updates to all of these character sheet things, and sometimes they populate and sometimes they don't. Regardless. So that's good. Now you have your armor. 
Okay, you also get uh, Thieves Tools and a Dungeoneer's Pack. All right, wait one sec. Okay. Um... Thieves Tools. Engineers Pack. Stuff in. Okay. You are proficient in these Thieves Tools. So where it says Tool Proficiencies, go ahead and hit that plus button. Right. Wait a second, I have two Thieves Tools. You do. If you hit the little lock, it will open up the uh, garbage can, and you can just. I go away. There we go. Um, where's the little plus thing? So where it says tool proficiencies and custom skills, directly to the left of the equipment. Okay. Go ahead and hit the plus, and you're probably going to have to type in these tools. Yeah, you should be proficient in them. They are the modifier is also dexterity. Yep, correct. You also get two other uh, tool proficiencies of your choice. You don't start with them, but you get proficiency in them. So the tools list is same where you found uh, weapons on that left hand side. Go down to tools, and it gives you a large list of tools and i believe you get artisan tools obviously it one. says oh no no artisan two other category yep it just says two other tools of your choice so, however you would like well geez i mean there's tools and alchemist supplies sure so you can go ahead and add those proficiencies in there uh, Alchemist, I'm going to say, is Intelligence. And what was the second one you picked? Tinker's Tools. Tinker's? Uh, I'm going to say Dex. So, Alchemist's... Alchemist Supplies, okay. All right. Cool. Alchemist was intelli Intelligence. Intelligence. All right. Um, okay. Hang on, let me let me just double check and see what. Let's see, artisan's tools, blah 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 blah. Um, these tools. No, I have <clears throat> I have that. Since you bonus to any check, I'm trying to figure out which one. Artificer, there we go. Okay. Artificers, okay. Uh, nothing there. There we go. Uh, long hour study tinkering. Huh, doesn't say. Uh, what doesn't say? Find out if the artificer uses tinkers tools or, uh, I mean, I, or uh, alchemist supplies. I'm guessing they do. So this is just proficiency in these things, right? You don't actually start with them, or your your uh, your artificer you, starting. I'm just trying to figure out if I would use these proficiencies. Um, let's see. So I just want to make sure. Um, I would say in the case of, like, let's say you have your mechanical servant, it would take uh, Tinkerer's tools to be able to fix him. Right. So that might be useful. Um, as for alchemist supplies, I mean, you learn more alchemical formulas, but you get those anyways when you have the Alchemist Satchel. But, I mean, it would allow you to create other potions that aren't listed here. 
Um, or right. the possibility to create other potions that aren't listed here. You get a lot of tools um, proficiency, so I mean, whatever you think would be useful or you'd like to use. I mean, even even if you want to be a brewer or something, brewer supplies. Nope. I'll stick with what I got. Okay. So now in the uh, features and traits column, uh, go ahead and uh, actually under equipment, because this doesn't exist in the compendium, if you hit the plus button and go ahead and add your alchemist satchel. Alchemist satchel. Okay, and let's assume it weighs one pound. Sure, that's fine. Um... So on the features and traits side, you learn at first level, you get fire, acid, and one of your choice. Uh, fire. So let's see if I can type these in here. That's unfortunate. Okay, so this is something I can kind of do. Okay, so now it pops down there. All right, I'm going to have to add that manually. Um, okay, so you get Alchemist's Fire. Okay, well, I can just drag that then. Uh, sorry, uh, it's Alchemical Fire. It's not the exact same. Uh, and it doesn't actually populate it as an attack in spellcasting. So because I don't, I'm trying to see, if, are these instantly created as you pull them out? Is what I'm trying to find out. Because that would be ridiculous. Because that would mean you'd have unlimited amounts of healing drafts. Yeah. Ah, Okay, once the creature regains hit points from the alchemical formula healing draft, the creature can't do so again until it finishes a long rest. So I can pull one, and then I can't pull another one until I've rested. No. So healing draft... I'm just reading healing draft. The creature that uses healing draft can only use one per long rest. Doesn't, that does not limit you in creation of these. But it limits right. their use to once a day. Right, okay. Per creature. Um, so, yeah, it sounds like you just pull these out. Which is really strong. Because um, I don't have to, pre to prepare anything. I can just keep... I can technically keep chucking acid vials at people, can't I? If they are within 30 feet, yes. I don't... Well, then... Don't necessarily need a crossbow. But okay. Uh, well, crossbow has much further range, but yes. Yeah, um, mm, interesting. Bag and its contents are both magical. Magic allows you to pull out exactly the right materials for the alchemical formulas. And it takes. That must be in reach. As an action, yeah, it's you just you just do this. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So here we go. Let's just do this. You get fire. So alchemical fire. Uh, the attack made with this. Chemical formula option requires a saving throw 
I still think it's... We're going to make them dexterity throws to hit. You'll be proficient in throw. And the range is 30 feet. The damage is 1d6, I believe. Contents disappear if not hurled. Or take 1d6 damage. Okay. Uh, the damage... No, there's no bonus to the damage. It's just 1d6. Crit is another 1d6. Uh, type is fire. Saving throw is dex versus DC. Intelligence. I think that works correctly. Save effect is, I believe, half damage. Must succeed or take 1d6. So save effect is uh, no damage. interesting uh, a creature object or surface I think that works let's see oh hey look I crit uh, so 20 plus proficiency plus dex bonus chemical fire rolls for 3 uh, 1d6 both 2 times because I crit 30 feet, alchemical fire. Yeah, okay, that works. Alchemical, alchemical fire is in there now. Alchemical acid. Similarly, uh, it is a dex, proficiency, range, 30 feet. If it's 1d6 acid. This one's interesting. Their saving throw is dex, but if they fail, they automatically take max damage. Really? Oh, an object automatically takes this damage. Gotcha. Okay, so okay. I, I could theoretically take down a door. Depending on the thickness of the door and what it's made out of, sure. Or I could... I, yeah, I could just keep throwing acid at it over and over and over again. Yeah, that, mm, okay. <laughs> or pour acid into the lock. Yeah. There you go. Pour acid on the floor, create a, a tunnel through the stone. <laughs> Gonna take a lot of acid. We have infinite acid, so. Formula's damage is increased by 1d6 when you reach certain levels. Interesting. We're going to have to look up more about how people handle this. If you have unlimited, that's, that seems really busted. <laughs> like it's not limited by the amount of spells you have or something. It, it seems... Hmm. I believe I have uh, objects automatically take full damage. If it rolls correctly. 20 plus dex plus proficiency rolls a 1d6. And the last one. So what is your last uh, potion option at level one here? What would you like? There are three formulas. Uh, fire, acid, and one other option of your choice. An additional formula of your choice at third, ninth, 14th, 17th. All right, so let's see. Probably the healing. Let's see. Thunderstone. Uh, shatters on impact. 
Each creature within 10 feet of the point of impact must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be knocked prone and pushed 10 feet away from that point. Mm. Uh, hurl it on point. Contents disappear. Sticky goo. Difficult terrain for one minute. Any creature that starts its turn on that ground must be halved. After using this formula, you can't do so again for one minute. Okay. Mm. Uh, and let's see. Smoke stick. I guess around the stick is filled with thick smoke that blocks vision, including dark vision. Could be useful, but I feel like unless somebody else gets a cleric, it would be best to get the healing draft. Sure. For that, and then later on at third level, we'll get something else. Okay. Um. So we're going to go under features and traits. Healing draft. Sources class. Source type. Um, oh. Artificer level one. That works. All right, so I think that starting at first level, your understanding of magic items allows you to analyze and understand their secrets. You know this artificer spells detect magic and identify and can cast them as rituals. Wait, where is that? Uh, underneath all of these uh, formulas, magic item analysis. Uh, it's the last thing you get at level one. Oh, cool. So just I how I added... Something. I'm sorry? You can just look at something and know what it is. Yes, after casting a ritual spell, which takes 10 to 15 minutes. Whatever. But yes. As long as they can wait. I mean, it, so it, it's faster than like attuning to something, which would take a short rest, which is about an hour. Bag of holding, cap of water breathing, drift globe, drift globe. Hmm. Bottles of night, sending stones. I mean, second level, the obvious choice is the bag of holding, unless you find one. Which you probably won't find that early, to be honest. But yes, bag of holding is, to me, it's the obvious choice. <laughs> it's too useful. This way, one of the methods of uh, completely destroying a castle without ever going inside is empty it's out the back of holding put the drought of endless water or the decanter of endless water into the bag of holding holding fill up and then release it sure generally in a bag of holding you have to reach in and grab something to pull out well okay I'll just pull out the water wouldn't I I don't know. We'd have to discuss that, I think. Wouldn't that mean, then, that whatever dimensional plane is inside the bag of holding would eventually just completely fill up with water? Yes. And every single bag of holding in the entire world... No, they each water. they each have their own pocket plane. Much like how wizards can just create their own pockets of existence, that's how the bag of holding works. Eventually fill up. The bag of holding? Yes. Oh. It has a weight capacity, so that's how it would probably fill. It doesn't necessarily have a space capacity. Yeah, but then again, like, well, 100 pounds of water is not... Hmm. I get the feeling you're going to be one of those types of people that tries to break the game. I, I try to think of creative solutions uh, to mundane problems, yes. Bag weighs 15 pounds. Bag can hold up to 500 pounds. Okay. And especially think of creative uses for magical items that the intended use. 
So you'd basically have to calculate the flow rate out of a two-foot diameter mouth of water. And then whatever the pressure behind that is. So sure, you want to find that out? Go for it. Um, all right. So if you want to add what your magic item analysis, add magic item analysis under features and traits. Where to go? There it is. Uh, features and traits. Okay. So plus magic item analysis class source type art. Artificer one. Yep, and just copy and paste magic item analysis underneath that. What's going on? I, I don't know. You tell me. He said add it under features and traits. That's what I did. Correct. So did you copy and paste magic item analysis under it? Yeah, I, just, I hit the plus under features and traits and then typed in magic item analysis. I meant that, but okay. Um, all right. So that's that. Tool expertise is at level two. Wondrous invention is at level two. Uh, let's see what else here. Make sure we got everything from your race. I don't think we did. I might need to go back and do for the dwarf as well. Handbook, rock gnome. Okay, so other additional features and traits are dark vision, gnome cunning, etc. If I can just, oh, that's spells. Does it function the same? No. Neat. Uh, you, okay, we can do languages. So if you go down to underneath your uh, tool proficiencies, there's other proficiencies in languages. Uh, you speak, read, and write common and gnomish. Okay. Um, gnomish, all right. Sure. Uh, and then that's that. You have a lot of... Oh. Hang on, I'm reading underneath the... If you go back to Rock Gnome, there's a bunch of stuff under here. Uh, let's see. As a Rock Gnome, you have automatic proficiency with Artisan or with Tinker's Tools. So you might want to change your other one. Okay, hang on. I can't find rock gnomes. Wait, oh, here we go. Races. Uh, um, rock. Here we go. Uh, you have an advantage in all intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws against magic. That's nice. Ooh, dark vision. Yep, so if you would please add all of these under features and traits. I believe it will expand this column as you add things. With art oh, so I should change I should change my proficiency with Tinker's tools to a different tool, you mean? Correct. Because you have automatic proficiency as a rock gnome. Oh boy. Mm. Rockwork item? Good lord. Yeah, you have a lot of fucking options here, and Artificer is not making it any easier. <laughs> Makes it easier you for have me so later much on. Shit. Huh? Makes it easier for me later on because, you know, I have those options. Um, where is this? Okay, so Tinker's Tools, Alchemist Supplies. All right. Uh, rules, tools. Here we go. Uh,. Um, what do I want to do? Cobbler's tools, carpenter's tools, calligrapher's supplies. 
Um, I don't know. Oh, it's, um, I'm never going to get navigators tools. I I figure. Depends. Oceans do exist in this world. Just go navigators tools for lack of anything else that's interesting. Uh, all right, where is it? Okay, there we go. Navigators tools. And should it be intelligence or wisdom? Mm, I would say intelligence. Uh, okay, then that's done. Uh, let's see, what else do I need to do? All of your rock gnome features you need to go under the features and traits column. Okay, okay, so let me move that over here. There we go. I like use the compendium to add these in. Uh, yeah, I tried. It doesn't actually, the dark vision's not in there. Uh, let's see if gnome cunning is in there. Gnome, gnome traits, gnome, rock gnome. No, see, it's not, it's not there. That's the thing. But I mean, copying and pasting, just not easily accessible. Really sad. Different vision. Mm. Gnome cunning. That's what you mean by copy paste? Okay. The physically copy and paste, yes. Okay. Uh, no cunning. No. Okay. Uh, let's see. Or so just do uh, artificer's lore. I'm sorry. What? What about artificer's lore? Or just artificers lore. I mean, should I skip languages since I added it? Yeah, yeah. We language is already somewhere else. Easy enough. Or right. or source class. Oh no, no, that's racial. No, let's do that. Tinker. Uh, tinker. Um, do that. A curiosity forest gnome. Even small beasts. Now these all suck. <clears throat> there. Okay. What's next? Making sure everything is there. Okay. So that is all your racial and your class features. Cool. So now we need to move on to your background. All right. Go to player options uh, at, on the website and then go to backgrounds. Gives you a whole bunch of options. The source we're going to use is the player's handbook. Uh... Options, backgrounds. All right. Uh, let's see. So just going to... Wait, do these actually have... have bonuses to them? Okay. Yes, they do. Okay. Uh, only doing the, the player's handbook versions, right? Correct. Makes it a little easier. Player's handbook. Yeah, there there's we're. a lot of options. And charlatan might make sense.
Mm. Battle spy. Trustworthy contact who acts as your liaison to a network of other spies. You know how to get messages to and from your contact, even at great distances. Specifically, you know the local messengers, corrupt caravan masters, and seedy sailors who can deliver messages for you. Hmm. Aider seems counter to my character. Old artisan. All right. Oh, I, but I get a free set of artisan's tools. Yeah. Uh, Those tinker's see. tools might be handy. Uh, you gain access to powerful political figures through the guild if you are a member in good standing. Such connections might require the donation of money or magic items to the guild's coffers. Dues of 5 GP per month to the guild. If you miss payments, you must make up back payments to remain in the guild's good graces. No, okay. CB, he's he's not a monk. It just <clears throat> matches the uh, the same hit dice. He's using uh, an artificer, which is not listed. Oh, wow. Hold. Uh... We have to do the... Traits. Um, I suppose no, you don't, but it helps you define how your character interacts with the world. Is one rather than roll? Sorry, what? Is like the personality traits and like the the specialty of the guild and whatnot uh, for guild artisan. Face other uh, backgrounds. Ask you to roll a die to find out which one it is. Yeah, you don't have to roll. You can choose if you want to. They're basically, they're see them as guidelines on like maybe something that you would want to do. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hermit, no. Noble, no. Noble Knight, no. Outlander. Sage. Hey, Jess, how you going? How's it going? Welcome to... The shit show that is character building. What room are you in? What room am I in? Here. Sorry, I don't... You keep cutting out. I'm not sure if your microphone's set at a sensitivity that's a little too high or, or what. Or oh, a I'm sorry, a pickup that's a little too high. Okay, well, uh, I'm, I'm checking OBS now to make sure that that's not the case. Uh, you're talking to Jess, and I don't see anyone yeah. else in the voice channel. No, 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 they're just in chat. This is, I'm sorry, it's streamed. This is being streamed? Yeah. Oh, God. What? I streamed all the early ones. <laughs> Why are you streaming it? Because character creation is fun, and some people are interested in it. All right, well, in that case, if anyone's in the channel... Uh, youtube.com slash rel plays go <laughs> subscribe yeah <laughs> it's uh cb and just jess right now so right. but yes this will be posted later and they might see that okay. additionally all the games will be streamed so yeah you can plug your stuff beginning and end get a stream as well because like why not yep uh oh my god i don't know what to do Charlatan seems good. Mm -hmm. uh, a set of weighted dice, a deck of marked cards, or a signet ring of an imaginary duke and a belt pouch containing 15 gold. I can get a false identity. I can get a scheme for myself. <laughs> Glad to hear it, Dragonus. Nice. Worthless junk is worth their hard What are you money. making, bud? <laughs> uh, on the other hand, obviously... Uh, Guild Artisan would be more in keeping with the Artificer in general, but like not even necessary because it's it's redundant. Uh, I suppose. I mean, you get the benefits of uh, extra equipment, Guild membership, and uh, a couple specialties. Yeah, but well, I mean, let's see. If I was doing specialties, uh, Network of Artisans, determine the nature of your guild. Uh, let's see. Tinkers, pewters, and casters. Uh, glass blowers, da -da 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 mason stone cutters, da -da 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 weavers and dyers. That's all well and good, but still. Let's see.
I feel like ones to go with are either Spy or Guild Artisan. Sure. Um, I mean, if you really can't decide, roll a D2. Uh, or D3. Well, let me see, let me see. One. It's, uh... Yes, yeah, so CB, that that's apparently a placeholder wrong. name. Please, the wrong person must work to ensure that this individual never crosses paths with me or those I care about. Everything from my mentor, horrible person who's probably rotting in jail somewhere. Probably. Somewhere out there, I have a child who doesn't know me. I'm making the world better for him or her. Oh, God, no. Come from a noble family. Possibly. Powerful person killed someone I love. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Uh, I swindled and ruined a person who didn't deserve it. I seek to atone for my misdeeds. Oh, yeah, right. This is not a character who would atone for anything. This is a character who is like Trump, but actually intelligent and capable of carrying out his plans. Okay. Let's see. Can't resist a pretty face. Always in debt. Convinced that no one can ever fool me the way I fool others. Too greedy for my own good. Can't resist swindling people who are more powerful than me. I hate to admit it and will hate myself for it, but I'll run and preserve my own hide if the going gets tough. Yeah, I don't know. Spy, on the other hand, let's see, criminal. Uh, no. No, no, no. I kind of like Spy just simply because... And I get a free set of... Oh, no, wait, that's... I'm already proficient in those things. Like, I don't want to have double proficiencies because that's just a waste. Yep. Equipment, a crowbar, a set of dark co uh, common clothes, including a hood, and a belt pouch containing 15 gold. Eh. Artisan. A set of artisan's tools, one of your choice, letter of introduction, set of traveler's clothes, and belt pouch containing 15 gold. You know, I feel like that's the boring option. No, skill proficiencies, inside and persuasion, neither of which I actually have. I mean... To me, none of them are boring options. It depends on how you play the character. But I'm right? also trying to think of which, like, what fits the character, and it's those three, either char charlatan, criminal, or, or or charlatan, spy, or guild artisan. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of these, makes no sense that a guy who wants to create golems or create the perfect golem and take over the world is, say, a noble. <laughs> well, it would make sense if you were a noble. Let's see. Of your choice. Oh, so I could speak another language if I wanted. Set of fine clothes, signet rings, scroll of pedigree, and a purse containing 25 gold. See, that would be a little bit better. This would be, in fact, the world does revolve around me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, I had another character who was um, a paladin uh, who would be this. Like, he's a you know, high ranking noble, um, ultimately, an incredibly good person. But uh, his flaw would be number four on the list. I have an insatiable desire for carnal pleasures. Happens to everyone. He's basically a paladin who's a man whore. Uh, I think the best of you. You're welcome in high society. People assume you have the right to be wherever you are. The common folk make every effort to accommodate. I actually now I'm thinking kind of noble on the other hand. Avoid your displeasure, and other people of high birth treat you as a member of the same social sphere. You can secure an audience with a local noble if you need to. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's see. Option for personality traits. So my best, no. Well, accommodations, no. Uh, we all have the same blood. Pff, screw that. My favorite one's lost is lost forever. Actually, that one's a better one because this is a guy who holds grudges. To me an injury, I will crush you, ruin your name, and salt your fields. Okay, that's better. That's better. <laughs> Fact, respect is due to me because my position, all people know. Uh, do I have to put these in, by the way? Yes. Whichever ones you select, just copy and paste them into the personality traits, ideals, bonds, whatever, depending on what you selected. 
Last time I heard, you had four different backgrounds you were looking at, so. Seems like a good one. Okay. Noble in there, and I'm betting the monk isn't going to be one, neither, and neither the barbarian. No, neither of them are nobles. All right, so let's say, which one? Where do I put in that? Oh, background is... Let's see, personality. Obviously, we're going to be doing the Donald Trump version. If you do me an injury, I will crush you, ruin your name, and salt your fields. Okay. Let's see. Respect is due to me because of my position. Eh. Responsibility, no. Independence, no. Power, yeah. Power. The guy who's going to rule the world. We'll see. No, he'll rule the world. Okay. So far, you're the first one selecting uh, evil uh, in any of the ideals. So that's interesting. He's not going to be outright evil. I mean, he's not like kick a puppy evil. He's just uh, ambitious and ruthless. Sure. Uh, let's see. Nothing is more important than the mem other members of my family. No, screw family. Uh, houses alliance with another noble family? No. I am in love with the heir of a family? No. My loyalty to my sovereign? No. The common folk must see me as a hero of the people. Mm -hmm. I don't know. These are terribly good. I'm going to skip that for now. Uh, I mean, what would you make it? What is Bond supposed to be? <sighs> it's... Something that connects you to something else. So, like, let's take my loyalty to my sovereign is unwavering, or the common folk must see me as if as a people. So, it, it's something that forces your hand into making a decision. So let's say something is attacking the common folk, but it's not necessarily in your in your way. You will make an attempt to go uh, help them because you want them to see you as a hero, or. Right. Uh, nothing is more important than the other families, members of my family. If a family member's in trouble, you will drop everything to go help them. Compulsion. Yeah. So it's it's what what drives uh, a decision in in a certain direction, and these are these generally it's like a specific thing because you don't want it to be very general. In that, like you're always driven to do something. You want it to be kind of like, yeah, I'll face any challenge to win the approval of my family. Okay, so maybe your family only sees certain challenges as approval. So you only make decisions that like, or when it comes to decisions that your family would approve of, you have to think about that. Because mm, I'm thinking of one and it might not fit. Um, sure. Sort of along what the lines it? of Revolutionary Girl Utena, which is a very old reference, but still. Uh, the world must be cleansed. It's impurities. Mm. That's kind of vague. Yeah, I would uh, specify what you call impurities and what you call cleansing. Um, mm. Reliant on a particular person. So, for example, I am in love with the heir of a family that my, or, yeah, that my family despises. Wouldn't really want to do that because then, you know, then he can potentially be manipulated using that person. Yeah, that's me, kind of the point. Yeah, similarly, he would, well... Thank you, Jess, you know, I needed that. A minimum. Uh, the first one that seems like that would come up the least, or at least that would, that would have the possibility of putting my character in a position of weakness. I think to go after a monster that's attacking a village in order to have the common folks see you as a hero, that actually wouldn't be a uh, decent one. Actually, you know what? That might be a good one because he would then misunderstand that essentially as, you know, I'm taking over the world, but you will see him as a hero because I'm going to save the world from itself. Sure. That works. Okay. Paste. 
a flaw. The world does revolve around me. <laughs> Easy one. Mm, let's see. Do that. In fact, the world does revolve around me. After all, I'm going to run it. Sure. We'll see. What else do I get? Uh, set of fine clothes. All right. Yeah, this will be uploaded to YouTube. I'll just quickly drag that over. Uh, there's an additional one before this where we were working on a monk class with uh, the Couch Bum, who is the moderator in the chat. Uh, Thanks, Dragonus. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for following. Uh, the moderator in my YouTube chat. But yes, this will be on YouTube. Uh, if you go to Runaway Robot See? on YouTube, uh, there's another character creation already Results up there. Found. What are you looking for? I'm sorry. Full of pedigree. I'm so oh, Pedigree for what? I guess. Saying that, hey, I'm a noble of this house. Yeah, so that would you'd, that would be something that you would decide with me. Uh, so, let's see. And a purse containing 25 gold. So where's my money? Oh, right here. 25. <clears throat> so you are a rock gnome, correct? Yes. So you're from a noble house of rock gnomes. Uh, rock gnomes tend to live underground. Uh, so being we're starting in somewhat mountainous terrain, it makes sense that you would be in the area. Um... So you'd come from a noble rock gnome house. Uh, I don't have any rock gnome specific cities or family names, but what would you want your family name to be? Ugh. Um. Thanks, Dragonus. I appreciate it, man. Character that I did all those years ago. I'll make it new. Who cares? Thank you, sir. Um. Uh, um, let's see. Where do I put a name? Oh, there we go. I can pick any family name I like. Yeah, pick whatever. All right. Mm, let's say Arendal. Spell it for me. N D A L. A R N D A L. R. A R E. Because you're you're cutting out right at the beginning of stuff. I think it's it's not through OBS. It's it's all on uh, Discord. I think your like pickup for your mic is a little bit too high. But I'll screw Discord then. Um, let me type it in. R N D A R. There we go. Oh, did you type it in on Discord? Sorry, I was looking uh, at the, uh, the... roll twenty. And roll 20. Also, this is all saved, right? Yes, this, it automatically saves. Also, I can't see where you typed anything in. Hang on. Uh, it's in character name. Let me click this. Edit. Name r and There we go. Oh, I'm sorry. It's up. At, okay, in your character sheet. Correct. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is that your family name? Family name. You have a first name? Eventually. Okay, that's fine. Uh, house name R and R. They are a rock gnome noble house. So just as a as a heads up, yes, you are a noble. How much this means in uh, societies full of humans, dwarves, or run by either of those, or run by elves, or anything like that, you may not get as far as you think you will. But if they know of your house and they know of the uh, the rock gnome kingdom you come from. Uh, then yeah, maybe maybe it will help you. Um, for where you're starting, it'll probably help you because they'll be relatively close to the location of your city. I'll have to figure that out on the map where I'm going to put that. Um, do you have a, a particular name you'd like for a city? Are you the rulers of the city? Are you just lords of the city? What is uh, what is the relationship you guys have uh, with whatever this city is that you are a noble of? Hmm. I feel like I would want to be the ruler of the city. Okay, so you come from 
uh, a family that rules. Are you the physical ruler? Or is it your uh, father, your mother, your brother, sister, cousins? Father and mother, I guess. Okay. Let's see. Now, are they being of a noble house? Or would you call them the king and queen of this area? Or would you call them like the lord and lady? Uh, barons? What? what uh, how high ranking are they? What, they'd be the equivalent of, what, a duke or something? Sure, sure, sure. A duke and duchess? That works. Son of a duke. Works. You're the son of a duke. And depending on their relationship with the nearby uh, human kingdom, it depends on how prosperous they are. Uh, this city that, that you're a part of that they rule over, is it a, a trade city? Is it a mining city? What, uh, what, what is this city like? Like the ideal circumstance would be a trade city. Okay. So a trade city. Uh, what would they be trading out? Uh, do they do ores or they do items? What is what is their yeah. textiles well, for wait, some wait. reason? Um, I was thinking because think about this: you're you're a rock gnome and you're in the mountains somewhere, so it's something that would likely have to come through the mountains at some point. To the north of the mountains is the deserts, uh, and there are things out in the desert that you could possibly that could possibly come through, and maybe you're just a stopping off point. Uh, to the west, there's the ocean and uh, the dwarven settlements, so you could be picking up stuff from the dwarves. So do you want to just call it a trade hub, or is there something that you think specifically this is what the city does? Could be a trade hub, but I was thinking for its specialty would be uh, jewelry and precious gems. Okay. Jewelry and precious stones. A hub, and so let's say you do uh, precious stone mining. Hey, guys. Hey, Latana, what's up, man? Yeah, sorry, so precious. Just thought I'd drop in. Yeah, no worries, man. We will uh, get to your character in a little bit. We are wrapping up Rels now, going through some background stuff. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so precious stone mining. Uh, let's say you yeah, also do the re the refining of these of these stones. How about that? I well, that kind of sets up the overall structure. Um, I think that that about does it. Uh, if I'm looking at this all correctly, you don't get any spells. Uh, so, so while you have the time, like maybe type in some things about your bio, your your bio that you want me to know. Uh, maybe a backstory, things like that. Uh, just something that can help me decide how uh, how we play out with everything c that compares to your character. Um, but other than that, I think you are actually. I think there's one more thing that you need. You're a noble. You have a proficiency in a type of gaming set. Did you add that? So you're lighting up, but I can't hear you. The gaming set, what is that? Oh, a gaming set. So when you go to the tools list, oh, right, under right, the right, tools, okay. uh, there's uh, games that you can pick. So like cards or dice or something like that. Um, cards. It's going to be cards. Okay, Latana, you are in here now, so let me make sure you have a character set, sheet. So... Um, that's in my inventory, right? Or is that just an ability? Uh, you, we could say you own it. That's fine. So let's say you own one of those in your equipment and, uh, you also are proficient in it. Uh, uh Latana, you should now see a just random stock, uh, character sheet. I think it's, uh, U Utar Emmy. Obviously you can change this as it comes along, but, uh, that is now there in your journal tab, which is from the top. Uh, it should be chat and then journal for you. So if you click on journal, it should show up. Uh, let me just have a look at that. Uh, oh for the playing card gosh. set, what is the attribute for it? Um, mm, Let's see. Let me take a look at these real quick. Let me go back to tools. Journal tab. Oh, right. Okay. Tools. Playing sets. Uh, so if we did playing cards... You're proficient with a gaming set. Add proficiency bonus. Epic gaming, gaming set, set requires, requires a separate, separate proficiency. Okay. Let's see. If uh, it was cards, I'd say intelligence. Play. 
Intelligence if you're going to play um, without cheating. And then I would, I would, I might ask you to change it if we ever make a roll with the playing set to, if you're going to try to sleight of hand, I'll ask you to change it to dex or make a sleight of hand check. So just as, as an, uh, to be aware of that. But I think intelligence would be your, your, uh, proficiency for that. Whereas like dice is not intelligence. That's just like your, just perception or, I mean, just your, uh, per um, why can't I think of the word proficiency? Cause there's not really intelligence to be playing with dice. I don't believe. Not really. Just more uh, luck. Okay, uh, so we have that. You, did you get pick your extra language? Uh, so you said we're, we've got a desert, and then what else? Oh, okay, so to give you the rough outline, there, there will be a map on Wednesday, don't worry. Um, there, in the current country that you will be playing in, now there's gnomes near there, uh, as well as it's more of a human settlement. To the west, Near the ocean are some dwarves, and they are in the uh, mountains as well. To the south and west are elves, uh, and to the direct south of you is another human settlement. To the deserts to the north will be the dragonborn. Mm -hmm. uh, and also to the, more than likely to the west in the riverlands are going to be the, let's call it like the forest gnomes. So there will be more gnomes available as well. Uh, let me go um, back to does anyone else all the know... races are. Does anyone else know Dwarvish or Elvish? We have a dwarf in the party, and uh, no one knows Elvish. Okay. Uh, lit but it's, it's, it's any, so it's also any um, language. So you could pick a non-common language if you wanted to as well. And I don't know what would actually be useful. Uh, that's the thing. You don't necessarily know, but what do you think you would have learned as a noble? What language would you have learned as a noble? Of our trading partners. Correct. Okay, so you probably would have learned either Dwarvish or um, Draconic, I think. Maybe Elvish. So I, I would I would probably go Dwarvish uh, or... Yeah, Dwarvish or Elvish. Draconic would let me speak with a dragon. Yes, it would. Uh, we have our monk speaks Draconic as well. Fine then. Um, yeah. I mean, you can speak the same language. I'm not limiting you. I'm just letting I, you know what's I going know, on. But again, I min max a lot. Uh, okay. Have fun. <laughs> At least I don't do redundancy. I try not to. Or I try to avoid redundancies. Um, you. I mean, you could be even. You could trade with goblins or giants. They do exist in those mountains. Uh, orcs exist in those mountains. Halflings uh, are no. are. Let's say I speak goblin. Perfect, you speak goblin, which is actually a very gnomish thing to do. So sure, you speak goblin. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, now let's go back to what else do you get here? That's a good question. What else do I get? Yeah. Too many things, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I'm a noble. I, I have the advantage of being well-born and well-trained. Yes, you do. Uh, I um, you have your fine clothes listed. You have your signet ring playing card set. Uh, go ahead and put your scroll, uh, your identifying scroll into your equipment. Scroll okay. of pedigree. Uh, uh, and you put your gold in there already. We did your position of privilege. Uh, actually, if you go into your, your last feature, so go ahead and hit the plus under features and add uh, position of pedigree, just like you added all these other ones. You also get uh, another skill proficiency in history and persuasion. Oh, right. Okay. So I get, let's see. Hist you I already, have, already have history checked, which I believe is from your class. So if we go okay, back to so your class. That's from my class then. Yep. I'm going to it. Hang on. Uh, there's, you already have Arcana, correct? Yep. You have deception, investigation, medicine. Nature, religion, and sleight of hand. You have sleight of hand already, and you have yes. arcana already. So deception, investigation, medicine, nature. And, and I get history as uh, the background bonus. Uh, history and persuasion. Back? Persuasion. Where's persuasion? There it is. Okay. And you picked investigation? Okay. Perfect. 
Yep. So just add the uh, the noble suggested or the noble position of privilege to your um, features and traits list, and you're done. Features and traits. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yep. Uh, a side bit of homework for you before Wednesday. If you can, there's basically just Google, uh, like gnome token, uh, roll twenty, and then see. Check out the uh, the pictures in there. Maybe try to send me a PNG or something without a bunch of watermarks on it that you think looks like what your gnome might look like. It doesn't have to be exact, obviously, but something that you think looks pretty cool. And then send that to me, and I will add that to your sheet. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, find a picture? Yeah, yeah. So you're, basically what your map token is going to look like. So if you, if you go to Google and just type in uh, gnome roll 20 token and then pick something that you think looks cool. And there's just a bunch of random options in here as well. So, and just send that to me uh, in a DM on Discord. Uh, let's see. Oh, I like this. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, other than that, you are done. Uh, so, Latana, we will start with you in a moment. I'm going to get some water and go to the restroom because we've been doing this for about an hour or longer <laughs> now. So I'll be right back. No problem. All right. Making a character takes time. Yeah, sure. I've not, um, I've not done this for years, so I'm quite looking forward to it. All right, let's see. So I picked an artificer. I mean, I don't know if you care about min-maxing or if you already have a character in mind, but... I picked an Artificer Alchemist, which means I have limited healing ability, um, a lot of like tinkering ability, so I can you I can throw vials of fire and acid uh, and create healing droughts, but I can only make them or I can only make uh, I think one per rest period, essentially. All right. Okay. Yeah. So we currently have like no magical, no outright magical abilities. Dedicated healer. Okay. Well, I was looking to do maybe something elvish, but me being elvish healer. This is just the race. If you wanted to talk about classes, um, I think able to, yeah, Bard is able to do spell casting. So you have. Uh, slight options there, but obviously not nearly as much as uh, like a, a warlock, sorcerer, or wizard. Yeah. Um, any of those would, would be a fine class for an elf. Would be yeah, good. Some, something yeah. like that. Like I said, I want something that's going to be uh, something that's going to play out well. I mean, just I usually play the elves uh, in RPGs and stuff like that. Just preference. Yeah. Druid would also be good, you know, forest dweller Ooh. and all that. Um, also get to uh, shape shift and all that. Yeah, let's see what else. I mean, cleric is really nice. Uh, they're they're good melee characters, and they have uh, you know, anti undead capabilities and uh, healing. Sorcerer, warlock, wizard are more straight up magic or like offensive and utilitarian magic casters. So, I mean, what um, have we got so far? What's what's everyone gone for? One barbarian, one monk, so pretty melee heavy, and then me as an artificer, I'm sort of a ranged class. Okay. I'm kind of like a jack of all trades, but I can be able to have magic weapons later on. Ah, okay. So magic. Um, what are monks? What's a monks kind of? Is that melee, so like melee as well? Unarmed fighters. Ah, oh, right. Okay, cool. See, they um, weren't even a thing when I used to play. Latana, do you have the, uh, the the website I sent you? Yeah, I think I'm on it now. I think I'm on the character sheet now. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the character sheet. I'm talking about the the other website that I sent you. Let me look. Here, I'm going to go ahead and link it to you again. So this right here is the world, right? This this has everything in it, even things that we aren't going to use. But this oh, okay. is where we can start. Uh, so if you click on this, and yep. if you want to see the the classes, go ahead and go to classes there, uh, um, and then, yeah. Oh, classes, there we go. Yep, uh, so 
pretty much anything from this list. Uh, try to avoid using the UA stuff. Uh, just, but we are going to use a UA uh, I'm artificer. The only one using UA stuff because I'm just being difficult. <laughs> and what's the difference between the Ranger and the Ranger Revised? Uh, Ranger Revised is uh, the UA version, but oh, I mean, okay. it's it's fine if you would like to use that because it's not too different. Um, let's have a look. Do you know what? I don't really mind. Um, if it's going to cause problems, I can just stick with the original Ranger. Sure. I mean, they're both good. Let me just check this Druid out because I like the thought of this as well. Yeah, Druids so are good. Wild Shape, Wild Shape Improvement. Okay, so they have like one shape shift what they can turn into. Uh, you will end up having multiple, but yes. Yeah. Oh, see, I quite like that as well. Yeah, you're going to, let's see, what's the options in this version? Bear, Hawk, Wolf. Never mind. Where's the, the wild shape? Oh, yeah. Wolf, Crocodile, Giant Eagle. Oh, my God. Yeah. Choose oh, a whole bunch pretty of pretty cool. Yeah. And eventually you get to the point where, like, you can turn into whatever you've seen. You're going to have to be quite experienced. God, there's so much information here. Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of I'll why I impressed. sent all this stuff out about a week ago and said, hey, take a look. Whoa. I, I, I've <laughs> right. played D&D games on, like, PC and whatnot for years and years, so I understand the basics. It's really just a matter of what has 5th edition changed. Yeah, I mean, I played, I mean, God, last edition I played were in the 90s. So this probably is like three a trip down men memory lane for me. Uh, five E just kind of streamlined a lot of stuff. It's it's a combination of all of them. Obviously, they take all their experience and put it into one thing, and it and it just kind of streamlines a lot of it. And uh, I think it's as less player, gritty. It's not as difficult though. I mean, you've got the. I know I keep saying this. I'm not trying to put you off, but you've got the tough uh, job. <laughs> it's uh yeah, it'll be interesting. It together. But Rel has already made it pretty clear that he'd like to try to break the game at some point in time, so we're going to find out <laughs> how that works. I break the game. I just like finding interesting uses for mundane uh, applications. Sure. Interesting applications for mundane items. Okay, I think, I think I'm think i settled here. Do you know the... Uh, I've just looked at the Ranger, and there's some spellcasting involved as well, isn't there? So they're not just... Correct. Uh, Minor uh, spellcasting, yes, but mostly it has to do with... Uh, arrows. Like your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So y you have things like, um, let me see if I can see anything that's in here that makes sense. Uh, features, let's find spells. Natural Explorer, Fighting Styles, Spellcasting. Um, so you would know some spells, which is nice. Uh, you can, like, mark your targets and do extra damage to them. That's one of the main ones. Okay. So it's not, like super crazy ones and then there's ones that like oh you alter your arrow to do something different yeah all right i quite like i quite like the thought of that sure yeah rangers are really good my only fear is that we're lacking a healer if we do that uh the or artificer does have uh some healing options so you do have kind of a healer yeah it's, um, it's pretty I minor think... though yep cup healer rather than main class healer I yeah. know. I just I don't want to do an Overwatch though, and be pinned because I've done it last. End up the healer. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I mean, druids can do some healing. Uh, obviously, clerics can do healing. Bard can heal. Do you know what I think? See, I like the thought of the bow, but then I like the thought of the shape shift as well. Mm -hmm. And the druids probably going to give more to the group in terms of you know what what I can give back. Well, you Possibly. I mean, it's up to you, whatever you would like to play. Um, if you think... Here, I'm going to go to the Ranger spell list real quick and see what you would get. Uh, let's go to first level spells. You would, you would have Cure Wounds as a first level Ranger. You have the option for that. You don't have to take it. Uh, I think Goodberry also heals. Restores one hit point, so no, not necessarily, but it... <laughs> It does. Uh, it makes you able to not have to use rations. Goodberry's pretty cool in that way. Yeah, Hunter's Mark, first level spell. That's the one I was talking about, where you mark something and do extra damage. Uh, snare, Hail of Thorns. Yeah, so there's some there's some cool stuff in here. Do you have cantrips as well? Yeah, Hunter's Mark is a cantrip. All right, there you go. All right, cool. Yeah, do you know what? I think I'm gonna go for that. I think I'm gonna go for the ranger. Sure. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look. You're going to be a ranger. Do you know what race you would like to be? Under the player options as well, at the top of that page, you have your race option. So if you just open that in a new tab, 
Ah, oh, right. Okay. Uh, and then go to where the drop down says all sources. Go ahead and just click player's handbook. All right. All sources. Player's handbook. Why can't I yep. see that? Uh, so there's a, I, I don't know, it says oh, drop can, down, can, can. player's yes, handbook is right in the middle. Uh, yeah, so you can choose from these things. Um, just as a as a note, like Dragonborn are relatively rare. Um, half orcs, people may give you some sideways glances because you're half orc and orcs are generally chaotic evil. Yeah, I think I'm uh, set on a wood elf, to be fair. Sure, that sounds good. I thought that when you first mentioned it, I thought this would be cool. Oh, okay, I can't cool. wait to read all this. <laughs> it's going to be a lot, but we're going to go through it together, mostly. Yeah, that's fine, um, we're going to be so, a little notepad and paper here ready, so... That's fine. Uh, so, on your character sheet in Roll20, where it says Class, go ahead and change that to Ranger. Right, hold on then. So, you might have to, I might be a bit slow here. Right, because sure. a minute it says Barbarian, so yeah, so Ranger. Yep. Go ahead and take change that to Ranger. Yep. Uh, then we're going to leave it at, as that. Um, and then you've now made these decisions. So what we're going to do is roll your statistics. So this is how we roll in the game. If you go to the chat log, which is on the top right, far left tab. Yep. Uh, at the bottom, you will type slash roll. And then you will type in 4d6. So that would be four six-sided dice. And cool. then d1. Here, it'll, it'll pop up. Hang on. D1 to drop the lowest. So you see where it says rolling 4D6 D1? Yep. You would type slash roll and then space 4D6 D1. Got this it. is to okay. decide what your stats are going to be. Let me get to a new page to write down your stats. All right, Latana. I'm looking hey, forward to this. Okay, so now you're going to roll this six times. So go ahead and copy and paste <laughs> that and we're going to get rolling. Okay. Can you see this as I'm doing it as well? Yes, I can. Oh, he's doing that. Uh, I'm going to change my family name. Click and um, drag to roll the... Okay. okay. Uh, do you want to just tell me what it is right now? Here, let me put it in chat. After he's done rolling. 15? Okay. Okay, where's that come up? Have I missed something there? Uh, the chat oh, at the bottom? I got it. I got it. I got it. Yep. I was at the top of the chat. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So 15? Yep. How many times am I rolling this? So five more times. Okay, hold on. I'm making notes at the same time, so bear with me one sure. sec. Yeah, I'm making notes too. Don't worry. Cool. All right. Okay. 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 Stickler for detail. All right. Here we are. Right. <laughs> okay. So just type in that again. Yep. Yep. So same thing. So might as well just copy and paste it, and then you can just. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yep. All right. Cool. Oh, I've got little three D dice behind it. Oh, I like this. There's eight. Yeah, you, you have the option for that if you'd like to turn that on. Okay. I probably don't yes. need it right now because I can't see it anyway for the sheet, but okay. So that was eight. That was rubbish. Okay. Come on, let's have a big one. <laughs> the double yeah. ones will get you. 14 is good. All right. Three more times. What's my max roll for this? 18. 18. Oh, these are good then. <clears throat> All right, I spoke Ten. too soon. That's fine. That's <laughs> dead on average. <laughs> Come on, let's go big. Yeah, 13. And then... Right, I'm guessing this is charisma. This can be low. One. No, no, no. Uh, so you get to choose wherever these go. Oh, Oof, even better. Actually... All right, cool. Yeah, so th these are just the numbers you get to use. Oh, um, yeah, you can just... You can just throw that 8 in a dump stat. Probably uh, int, I'm betting, for Ranger. Well, he can decide whatever he wants to do. <laughs> um, His two... Uh, so you're you're probably going to want your dex to be the highest, and then your wisdom to be yeah, I've second just highest. Dexterity next to fifteen, and then wisdom next okay. to fourteen. So in your character sheet, where it says on the far left, where it has strength, dexterity, constitution, yep. that whole thing, uh, where it says tens, start changing them to what you want them to be. Ah, okay, got it. So dexterity based on the rolls that you just made. Um, wisdom, we said we want next fourteen. So they're like my two priority stats, if you like. Um, I don't think I'm going to be in the thick of combat. Hopefully not. Because I'm going to be. So you you do have the option as a ranger. You don't have to be an archer, right? You can do you yeah. Can I just fight, like the but I mean, the you archer could thing. That's what also I'm be an archer. Role play. Okay. Um, oh, I've put 15 in strength. Damn it! Hold on. Right, 15 in dexterity. Right, there we go. Right. Um, and I've got what's my next stat? 13. So. Mm. I'll go strength. 
Yeah, go on. I'd say 13 in strength. I was just about to say that. Yeah, I've just highlighted it. Okay, good. 13 strength. Constitution. Well, I've only got 10s and 8s left now. So the 8 I'll put into, like you said, intelligence, I think. Because that's by no means his dumb. It's more his perception, isn't it? Uh, actually, wisdom is perception. Intel so here's the difference. Uh, perception is I noticed that bird. I noticed those footprints. I noticed something uh, out of the corner of my eye. Intelligence is saying I know why there's footprints here or what made these. I know why that bird would be there. I just might not have seen that. Or uh. you, you as, as perception, you notice there's this door is oddly clear on this one side. It looks like the dust has been moved off. Intelligence will tell you this is why it's in this pattern. Got it, got it, got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, that seems strange then because it would, it would make more sense if a ranger's secondary I was just thinking was intelligence. That. Uh, not necessarily, because you want them to perceive more. You want them to, to notice things more than anything else. You want them to see the tracks. You want them to be able to follow those tracks. Um, I get you, what they don't necessarily... saying, He's saying that it's kind of like a tracker kind of thing. So these tracks are here because... So if yeah, you could, beast, you could do or... the, the because. Yeah, yeah. But like, gonna... so for, for your, your wisdom and stuff like that, your perception, you'll notice those tracks. And then your survival will, like, you'll be able to tell someone... or. So for survival, you'll be able to follow those tracks. That's what yeah. allows you to do that. Um, telling you what they are, yeah, it might be a like a an, an investigation check or something like that. But okay, here's that's what gonna, up to you. Here's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to okay. put the charisma at eight, sure. <laughs> only because he's an elf, and as an elf, they kind of are a little bit aloof, and that's not you know they're not like <laughs> boy, sure. Kind of, I know he's not a high elf, but still, they've got that kind of you know separation yeah thing. yeah yeah you you, you you're sure. a little standoffish especially in a world that's full of humans yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna put that into charisma i think just to roll out the character yeah, yeah you can you can play legolas as an asshole yeah 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 i like that thought that's, that's good <laughs> <laughs> all right so do you want me to read these out to you what i've put these into uh i, I can see it i have your sheet open i can oh, also cool. mess with your sheet so don't worry about it no, so, so if just... i don't like anything i can change it um know. So just check that they're right then. So I've got 10, 15, 10. My, my only suggestion would to be make your constitution 13 rather than intelligence, but you don't have to. Okay. Uh, the bonus, the plus one bonus just helps with your, your hit hey, points. I'll, I'll take the advice. Um, and, and again, a 10 <laughs> intelligence is, is completely average. Right, you're not dumb. Fine. You can read. It's fine. You're just <laughs> average. Um, okay. So as an elf, uh, you get plus two to your dexterity and your wisdom. So now your dexterity is 17. Nice. And your wisdom is 15. Okay, cool. Mm. Okay, cool. Okay. So I've just changed um, that Correct. Uh, you, you have automatic per per proficiency in perception. So in the columns next to all of these where it says skills at the bottom, yep, I see find it. the perception skill and yep. click the box next to it. Done. Okay, automatic per, uh, perception proficiency. Um, let's see if what else I can find in Do here. Do we need to take the charisma one as well? Because that says minus one. No, 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 no. You, okay. you, you'll it'll let you know what. Here, let me go to your class real quick. Uh, so that's elf. Let's go to ranger. Using uh, base ranger, not revised. Uh, yeah, I think I've put base ranger on this one. Okay. Uh, you will also have oh, proficiency. Just put ranger. It didn't say. No, it's fine. That's fine. Uh, it's it's kind of a an internal deviation. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um. So let's see. Do you have uh, up on the website that I sent you your ranger class open? Um. I can do one second. Yep. Uh. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So player options classes. Uh, yep. Got a class. Yep. Yeah, got it. Ranger. Ranger. Got All right. So. I'm sorry. I've gone to the standard ranger, not the revised. Perfect. So if you scroll down and it says ranger, and then it gives you a whole bunch of things. We're going to start with hit points here. So your hit points at level one is 10 plus your constitution modifier. So you have 11 maximum hit points. Oh, is hit this points down in the left, dead center. Uh, down on the left column, yeah? On the bar at the side. I see it now. Okay. So hit points, 11. Where are hit points? On roll 20, on that character sheet, it says hit point maximum directly in the center, right below armor class, initiative, and speed. Ah, got it, yep. So that's 11, yep. Yep, so hit point maximum is 11. Current is also 11. Got it. 
Uh, so that's that. You're proficient with these armors and weapons. We'll get to that. Uh, your saving throws are strength and dexterity, which are already marked, if you see those right. on the left there. Right. Okay, so now you get to choose three skills. You have automatic perception, which is great. So now yep. you get to pick animal handling, athletics, insight, investigation, nature, stealth, and survival. Choose three. Oh god, right. This this is this is big. Um hold on. So It's pretty important. Uh oh, acrobatics would be so cool. Um animal handling. That's well, cool. you don't get to so so go to your look at your hunter or your uh, ranger tab. You don't have the option to be proficient in acrobatics. Ah, got it. Okay. So, so there's the... a list that says under saving throws, it says skills. This is your skill proficiencies. It says oh, animal okay. handling, athletics, insight. Yeah. So wow. the, what you just do is you scratch out perception and you pick three from the others. Right. Okay. Let me put these in different tabs because this would just help if the side by side. Right. Okay. So that's there. That's there. Right. Got it. So if I go for, um, so proficiencies, um, all right. I would say, um, oh, the pressure. Uh, no, don't worry about it. I mean, it's <laughs> just proficiencies. Uh, survival is really good for tracking. Um, let's see what else you got here. Oh, we've got page. an automatic boost in perception anyway, haven't we? So yes. Do we need that? We don't need that again, shall I? No, so, you can't double it. What about um? Just explain. Uh, there's one I wanted to know about. Hold on, athletics. Uh, investigation. Just explain that one to me. Uh, investigation. This is what I was talking about, the difference between investigation and perception. Uh, so, in perception allows you to see something. Yep. Which, like, something that might be hidden, like something stealth or something else. Investigation will tell you what that thing is, or tells you details about it. So, like, let's say you notice footprints. And right. you're like, huh, I wonder what this is. I, may, I might say, okay, make an investigation. And then you'll see, okay, the footprint is such and such long by this and this wide. I know this to be this animal or this beast or this thing. Uh, or it was made in the mud 10 hours ago. Like that kind of thing. I love that. Investigation okay. tells you the details Got of it. something that you've noticed. So what I'm going to go for then, animal handling, investigation, and nature perhaps? Because I think that goes Nature's well with good. the character. Uh, so, so, yeah, let's see. You want animal handling. You said animal handling and what? Investigation and nature. Okay. And nature. Or no, that's not survival. bad. No, I'm going to go nature. The only thing that I would, because you see how nature and investigation are intelligence based. Yep. Uh, so you okay. you already have low bonuses in that. So you can either try to boost those up a little bit by being proficient in them, or you can you know try to max out the stuff that you're already good at. Okay. All right. So what about? And I'm open to advice on this. Animal sure. handling, investigation, and survival. Animal handling, investigation, and survival. Yeah, sure. I think survival is super useful as a ranger. It okay. allows you to track things easily. Cool. That's perfect. That's, that's so, like, if you're if you're leading the party somewhere, you don't get lost as easily if you have good survival. Good. All right. Yeah, that's perfect. So instead of taking like two weeks right. to get somewhere because you get lost in the woods, you can have the ranger be like, "No, no, 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 no. <laughs> we take the right trail and we get there in two days." Yeah, that works. So. For me. Yep, so go ahead and click the uh, check boxes next to those. So animal handling, so uh, animal investigation, handling. yep, <clears throat> and survival. Got it. Perfect. So okay. that gets you those things. Now we're going to go down below that where you, it says other proficiencies in language, tool proficiencies, custom skills, that kind of stuff. Yep. So in to other pro proficiencies in languages, go ahead and hit, hit the plus button. Yep. You are proficient in light armor, medium armor, and shields. So you can just type that in. It's under right, armor. I'm going to be in the wrong section here. Just say which section that might is be. that again. Uh, so where it says other proficiencies oh, in languages, you, you can see me like messing with stuff. So it's like, oh, oh you yeah, have weapon yeah, proficiencies, yeah. Uh, and your proficiency is in simple weapons and martial weapons, which I'm just copying and pasting over from the other side. Okay. So, and then there you go. So there's your weapon one. And then you also have the option to add the armor one, which is going to be light armor, medium armor, and shields. Okay. Do you want me to add that? Or... Yes, please. Okay. Just so, so you get accustomed to how this works. Type armor, proficiency, lights. 
Yeah, so you, you see where you can just copy and paste it straight from the other website that I showed you? Okay, just tell me if I've done that right. Uh, yeah, so additionally in that, you can go ahead and add light, uh, medium, shields, or and shields to this. So you're proficient in all of these things. All right, cool, got it. Yep. So you see, you, you see where the proficiencies are, where I had you read those skills and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I can just see them just reading from up there. Um, okay. So those are proficiencies that you have. Now let's go to your starting equipment. This is this is some of the fun stuff. Um, at the top right in roll twenty, where yeah. you see the chat log, the journal, and then there's an I. Um, chat Select log. Yes. the I. It's called the compendium. Got it. Yep. So the compendium is pretty useful. They've they've done some updates to it. But what we're going to do is you get some choices in what you use. You automatically get a longbow and a quiver of 20 arrows. So type in longbow into the compendium. Into the compendium. All right. Yep, okay, so where it says that search bar. Longbow. Yep, and yep. you see where it says just longbow? Yep. Click and drag that into your equipment. Your equipment is bottom center. Oh, I see it, yep. Got it, cool. yep. It's in there. Now, so now you see how it also populates your attacks and spellcasting? Ah, uh, yeah, cool. So it auto-populates your attacks, which is nice. So now also type in arrows. So the arrows. Yep, yeah, it's the top one again. Oh, yep. God, I've got loads here. Hold on. Acid arrows. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, just, just, uh, should just be arrow. Oh, if you, if you uh, minimize the spells portion and the classes and the monster. Wow, really? All of these things. <laughs> this is what I was saying. Items, arrows. Yeah, arrows. I, found it, I found it. I found it. Okay, so just click and drag arrows into the equipment. Okay. And then type in where it says one. Put in twenty. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Swore as you so, as got you it. can also see where it populated underneath flaws, it now shows you twenty arrows. Yep. Got it. So keep track of these. This is how many shots you have. <laughs> right. Got okay. It. Uh, so now other things that we can choose. You have the options for scale mail or leather armor. So the differences between these is your armor class. The armor class is what an enemy needs to roll to be able to hit you with anything. So the higher the armor class, the harder it is to hit you. Okay. So now your armor class is going to be whatever the armor you choose. In this case, if you choose uh, leather armor is 11 plus your dexterity modifier or scale mail which is 14 plus your dexterity modifier the 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 problem is the scale mail is limited to only plus two and it gives you disadvantage on stealth rolls yeah i think i'm going to go for the uh, for the leather which i think i Perfect. found already so, so yep, go ahead and drag and drop into the equipment there it is and let's see if it auto updates it did not you have an ac of 11 no it did 14 perfect there it is Awesome. Uh, okay, uh, so now that's chosen. Now you have options between two short swords or two simple melee weapons. So if you go to, if you open up the, so on the website rather than roll 20, yep. if you go scroll up and where it says rules at the top, go ahead and open that in a new tab. Rules, oh yeah, got it. Yep, All so go ahead and open that in a new tab. Uh, and then you're going to see on the left-hand side under equipment, it says treasure, armor, and weapons. So go ahead and click weapons. So treasure, ah, oh, weapons, there you go, yep. Yep, and if you scroll down, there's a large table towards the bottom. Yep, got it, oh my gosh. Okay, so now from this list, you can either pick two short swords or any two simple melee weapons. Right, okay, so these are all simple melee weapons, are they? Uh, so it says simple at the top. You says simple, and it says club, dagger, great club, etc. And then you have simple ranged, and then you have martial melee weapons, and then you have martial ranged weapons. Do you know what I think? Oh, I've got it right. Or I can go. The... Surely I'd be better off with the two short swords. Sure, you can go ahead and take those. Oh, but wait, quarter staff. That's pretty awesome. You can what use a quarter staff. So. Think it. Think about it this way. Um, more than likely, you're going to have the longbow in your hand. You're yeah. going to be at range. Uh, yeah. You want something that you're going to be able to draw quickly and use one-handed while you hold a longbow, just in case someone yeah, you're gets right. close to you. Let's do short swords. Okay. So go ahead and in the compendium, go to short swords. Right. Okay. So compendium. Right, one second. Bear with me. Right, short mm -hmm. swords. 
Sure. Uh, is that good, TB? Sword. All right, why has nothing come up for that short sword? Uh, let me try this. Bow. Short sword. You just type in short. Ah, found it. All one word. All right. Yep. How we doing it? So two. just click and drag one over. You don't need both. Just one. And yep. then type in two where it says one next to short sword. Um, so two where it says one. Yep, done. Perfect. And okay, let's go back to your class. Be short swords. Okay, and now you either get a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack. The difference between these two is the Dungeoneer's pack has uh, basically has climbing spikes that you can put into the wall. And the Explorer's Ooh. pack has a bedroll and uh, some flint and tinder. Um, I'm guessing most people have gone for the... Uh... The one with the flint and tinder to get as a campfire set up and things like that. Um, I think let me let me check both of these explorers because I think they might both because they both come with torches. Explorers pack, and then. Oh wait, I'm gonna head know? out. Um, okay, good, um, my. my uh, can you can story. you? So let me know what you think of that, and see you guys later. Yeah, thanks, yeah, man. later, dude. Okay. Um, dungeoneer. If I could spell this correctly, that would help. <laughs> All right, so you... Ah, the Dungeoneer's pack also comes with a crowbar and a hammer. Ten pittens, which are the climbing spikes. Uh, and that's about the differences there. The yeah, I think explorers, I'm going to go for that, because it's more terrain-based, which is what I'm... It, it's, it's definitely more climbing and cave-based if you go Dungeoneer's. Explorer's yeah. pack is definitely like an overground, you're out on the road kind of thing. Oh, mind you, then that makes more sense, doesn't it? As, as a, a wood elf, you would more likely have an explorer's pack. Yeah, let's I'll do let, that. The let's decision is definitely up to you. Yeah, let's okay, do that. Okay, so in the, uh, in the compendium, go ahead and type in explorer's pack. And uh, oh, it came up. go yeah, ahead and got it. drag and drop that in. So just drop it into equipment again. Yep, yep, there we go. Correct. Yep, yep, perfect. God, that's heavy. Yes, the packs are pretty, <laughs> pretty heavy. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, sure. Trying to exit out some of the things. I have so many tabs open right now following everyone's characters. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so that's your pack, and that's that's it. Cool. Now you have your equipment. When, let me check to make sure that Longbow is picking up the correct things. Dexterity, you are proficient. 1d8 damage plus your dexterity. Perfect. All right. Yeah, it looks like your uh, your weapons are working. Uh, so this is how you... Let's, let's go through how you would attack something. Okay. So you would say... All right, I would like to attack such and such enemy. And I say, all right, what would you like to attack that with? And you say your longbow. So yep. You go into your character sheet and you click the word longbow in attacks and spellcasting. So let me just attack and say, click longbow. Yep. Oh, wow. All right. uh, okay, 21 and 24. Okay, let me, I need to set up something. I'm going to change your sheet real quick. Hang on. Advantage toggle. Go back. Uh, so once more again for me, click that. Okay, so just click longbow in the tab again. Okay. Yep. Taking a minute to load. Cool. So you would roll. You rolled a twenty-four, and I would say, "Wow, good." A twenty-four hits the creature. Uh, nice. And so when I ask you to roll for damage, you go to inside the chat log and click longbow in the chat log. Oh, uh, okay. So if you click, click that. Yep, and it shows up four piercing damage, which means you rolled a one on damage, but you got plus three. So, you know, not terrible. You could have definitely rolled more, <laughs> but that's how you do damage. Got it, okay. So that's that's how that works. Um, I think short, is short sort of dex weapon? I guess it is. Yes, it is. Wow, neat. Uh, okay, cool. So that's how you roll damage. That's kind of how that works. Um, let's take a look at your class again. Ah, here we go. Favored enemy. This is where it gets fun to be a ranger. At first level, you have a significant experience studying, tracking, hunting, and even talking to a certain type of enemy. Now, there's oh, okay. a full list of enemies there. Aberrations, beasts, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals. Whole list of them. So let me have a look. So where's this list? Let me just find it. So if I go into the other tab. So, yep, in, in the, uh, the website, if you yep. go below starting equipment, and you see favored enemy. So starting equipment. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So ranger. Oh, favorite enemy. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yep. And you said so there was a, a whole list. Where's the list? I'm. Oh, right. Yeah, got it. Choose type of. Choose enemy. the type. Yep. Oh God. So Plants, really. Um. Yeah. There. There's a whole lot of <laughs> options. Uh, uh, additionally, 
you can choose two humanoid ones, like gnolls and orcs, or like goblins and something, or something like that. See, I do like I do like that, but then I was thinking beasts, because again, it ties in with what I'm trying to get this character to be like. Sure, do beasts. Yeah, let's do beasts. All right, so what I'm going to ask you to do now is, uh, in roll 20, there's a column that says features and traits on the bottom right. Let me find this. Yep, got it. Okay, so hit the plus sign at the top of that. Got it. Uh, and then you're going to want to put in a uh, favored enemy. It is a class feature. Do I just type that at the top where it says name? Uh, yeah, so go ahead and type name. And so the name will be favored enemy. Favored enemy, yep. Source will be class. Source, class, yep. Source type, then, beasts. Uh, source type will be ranger level one. Ah, right, okay. Ranger level one, yep. Yep, so then under that, I'm going, in the in the text box, go ahead and type in beasts. Oops. Oh, so this list can expand over time as your character develops. Yes. Got it, got it. You will like get that. additional ones uh, at 6th and 14th level. So you get beasts, so go ahead and hit uh, enter on that, and then go, and then highlight and copy and paste the section from the website that says you have advantage on survival, as well as intelligence, and then you gain this feature when you learn one language of your choice. Um, hold on, you have an advantage in... It says wisdom Here. survival checks. I got you. I'm just going to go ahead and add it, because I can mess with your sheet. Yeah, sure. So see how it's uh, all added in there? And I collapse it down, so you ah. have favorite enemy, ranger level one. Yep, I found um, it, yep. And then if I click this, it shows me in the chat, so uh, when you highlight over it and you click oh, the little nice. speech box, it shows me this. So when you say, hey, I think I have advantage on this, I say, wait, why? You go, I think I have favorite enemy. And you click this button, it shows me favorite enemy. That's and awesome. it tells me what you get for it. Yep. I know you've just done it. Let me just try that. Yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, love it. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so that's how you show me favorite enemy. Uh, and I'll we'll keep track as you level up that 6th and 14th, you get additional ones. Uh, and yeah, your choices should reflect the types of monsters you encounter on your adventures. Beast is fine. It's definitely a good general one to have as a wood elf. It'll go right? with you the will story, encounter. I think. Yes, you will encounter beasts. Go figure. <laughs> so now you have another one called Natural Explorer. It's right below uh, where you made your choice for favorite enemy. Okay, yep. So you're particularly familiar with one type of natural environment. So you have a whole bunch of options here. Um, it's gotta my be suggestion to you would be forest. Yes, yeah, correct. Uh, yeah. So go ahead and do the plus again. Type in natural explorer class ranger level one. Okay. So class ranger level one, and then yep. put that as class then, source type. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. In the name, put natural explorer. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and then underneath plus. that will be class, and then ranger level one. Right. Got it. Level one. And in the top, we put what was that? Sorry. What was the name of the thing again? What was uh, the name it of is the Natural, natural Explorer. Explorer. Yep. Yep. So Natural Explorer. Okay. And then the text below then. Let me try this this time. Uh, so I've got to get the text from Natural Explorer. Right. So let's start with the, the part that is... Uh, right after it lists all of them and it ends in Underdark. When it says, when you make an intelligence or wisdom check... And then scroll all the way down to the last bullet point and through that one, and then go ahead and copy and paste that in. Okay, got it. So I'll get to there. I don't need the tenth level thing, do I, at the bottom? Nope, nope. We'll pay attention to that as we uh, as we level up. It'll be something we look at. Got it. Okay, so I think that's I think that's done. Yeah, looks like it. Uh, and. When it's done, go ahead and hit the little cog wheel at the top right, and that will collapse it down. Ah, uh, I got it. Cool. I love that. All so right. let me just try that again. Yep. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. This Looks is a really good. good system. Yeah, it's it's they just improved a lot of it in the last couple of weeks, which is like the whole features and traits thing. This like you all just you just typed this in. There wasn't this like uh, adding got, stuff yeah. and being able to Yeah, it was really kind of annoying. Um <laughs> Okay, uh, the next portion of this is second level stuff, so we're kind of done with that. Uh, second level, you will learn spellcasting, which is important too, but as of right now, this is what you know. Okay. Eat. 
So this is your first level ranger. So now what we get to do uh, is we get to look at backgrounds. So cool. back where you found weapons, uh, or actually or anything else, go to the player options tab and go to backgrounds on the website I sent you. Player options tab. Um... At the very top of the website, it'll say player options. In the drop down, it says background. Oh, yep. Backgrounds. Got it. Yep. Yep. And then where it says all sources, click player's handbook. All sources, player's handbook. Got it. And these will be the things that you can choose from uh, to decide what your background was as a ranger. Oh, these are awesome. All right. Um, okay. I'm skim reading a little bit here. Hold on. I'm looking at at the minute Outlander. Let me just see what this Outlander is, is a really good generalized ranger selection. Yes. Yeah, so uh, it, it been strange fits places. the ranger pretty well. So there's some distant lands for yeah. These are perfect. Yep. Trapper, that's homestead, was... a guide. Yeah, that that just fits perfect. Yep. Okay. So on roll twenty, uh, at the top where it says background, top background. Yep. Outlander. Go ahead and type in Outlander. And then we get to make a whole bunch of choices in relation to Outlander. So you have Outlander clicked, I'm assuming. Yep. Cool. So you get automatic proficiencies in athletics and survival. So nice. go ahead and click athletics. And since you already have survival clicked, we get to decide on a different one. Ah, okay. So I can have an extra one as well. Right. Which I think you wanted... It... Uh, I'm trying to remember if it well, was Well, we looked at nature, but then I just saw medicine. Maybe that would help. Uh, well, so we have to go back to your ranger and see what you can be proficient in. Oh, with. God, yeah, of course. So if we go back to that... Okay, um, just, I've got that open still, so... I don't know. Sure. Uh, I've got about so eight you, pages open now. That Me too, man. <laughs> yep, I'm I got that open and the physical book open in front of me, so we got it all, plus the notes to the right of me. It's great. Yeah. All right, so classes... Ranger. All right, here we are. And it was the skills at the side. Animal handling. Right, the, here we are. Here we are. So, um, so perception, stealth, insight. I see, we got that, didn't we? So, oh, it was nature the one that I was looking stealth at. Might be, stealth might be really strong for you. Yeah, especially with the bow as well, because I can get into position sometimes. I'm yes. Thinking. So, Definitely. Here's, here's, here's a mechanics thing with stealth. Uh, if you decide you're going to enter into stealth at some point and you get to make an attack from a hidden position, you get advantage on that roll, meaning you get to roll twice to see if you hit and you take the higher number. Oh, it gives that's you a perfect. much better Yeah, it gives you advantage over that person. Plus your stealth with your bonus is ridiculous at plus six. I think yeah, that's actually super useful. Yeah, let's go stealth then. Perfect. All right, so that kind of, uh, that makes that all that. All right, let's go back to your Outlander. Okay, Outlander. I'm learning as I'm going here, which is pretty cool. Yeah, perfect. Yep, got it. Uh, all right, so, so more fun things. You have a tool proficiency in some type of musical instrument. <laughs> um, right? Okay. So let's go to uh, where you might want to open a new tab back in the, uh, rule, the rules list. So I'm going to open a new tab on rules. And if you go down to tools under equipment, you know where we found weapons and stuff like that? If you go yeah. underneath that, go to tools, scroll down, and then there's musical instruments. And there's a whole list of musical instruments. Oh, if wait, there's something that, on there... Is that in the compendium? No, 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 no. On the website. Okay, okay. So which tab was that? Sorry. Oh, I've got... So if wherever you found the uh, all the weapons list... Yep, got it. I found it, yep. So on the on the left hand side, underneath yep. weapons, go to tools. Uh, weapons, weapons, weapons. Yep. Tools. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna people oh, in the chat it. are asking it's asking about this website. So hang on a second. Let's go ahead and uh, that. Sure. Leave it. This <laughs> one. Here. I should get some bagpipes. That'd be awesome. Please don't. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll go with... Um... That's really cool, Dusan. I like that. All right. Uh, yeah, so there's all these... Uh, obviously, if you want to play something else that you've heard of and you and be like, hey, does this exist in your world? And I'd be like, sure, why not? <laughs> Do you know what? I think I'll go pan flute. I like it. So yeah, in, uh, 
Yeah, perfect. So go to the I believe this exists in the compendium. Let's type in pan foot. Yep, it does. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this since I've already got it pulled up. I'm going to drag and drop that into your equipment. And then under tool proficiencies and custom skills, far left-hand side should be blank right now. Yep. Go ahead and hit that plus button. Got it. And then you're going to type in pan flute. So when it says name, just type in pan flute there. Yep. Got it. Perfect. Then you are you are indeed proficient. Attribute uh, strength. The attribute is not strength. <laughs> so go ahead and hit that cog wheel. Let's open that back up. Okay, yep. The attribute to this is more than likely charisma. Okay. Because I most likely You're, suck at the pan flute. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's something like, if, if it was like a, a, a loot or something like that, I might uh, it might be dexterity, but I think charisma fits mostly with all of these instruments. I'm going to read through the rules real quick. Okay. Um, yeah, it just says separate proficiency, so it doesn't tell me what type they would be. I'm, I'm going to make the ruling and call it char charisma. Yeah, sure. So that sucks for you, but, I mean, it's your proficiency. You still get a plus one, so there you go. I'll make his backstory that he's learning it. Sure, that's fine. Yeah, he's wandering around and he's learning how to play the pan flute. Yeah. All right, so now we get new stuff in your equipment. Go back to the Outlander tab. Um, yep. Outlander tab, got it. Okay, um, so you, under equipment, you have new things. You get a staff. <laughs> so okay. it's mo mostly like a walking staff, but you could call it a quarter staff and just throw it in there. Because okay. you can still hit people with it, that's for sure. Shall I add that to the items, to the equipment then? Yes. Go ahead. Cool. Oh, I've just done that wrong. Oh, no, I can't. I can do it now. Staff. I think I should have dragged that across. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you go to the compendium. Uh, so if you hit the uh, the lock at the bottom right. All right, yep. Oh, and it, there gives you a little, little trash can. Perfect. Yep. Right, I got it now. So compendium, yep, got it. Staff. So drag over the quarter staff. Quarter staff, got it. Yep, done. How much weight uh, can I carry? I mean, this is getting... <laughs> oh, you're at 82. That's fine. Generally, it's... Uh, I think it's like five times your... Uh, there's there's a limit, but I don't necessarily pay attention to the weight unless it gets actually ridiculous. Right, so don't okay. really worry. I'm not going to micromanage that. Okay, okay. Um, so in this case, now you get to uh, get a hunting trap. I think that's in the compendium. So if, see if you can find that. Let's have a look... Hunting trap. Yep, got it. Just drag that in as well. Yep. Sweet. And let me look what else. Uh, a trophy from an animal you killed. 15 times your strength? Um, yep. Awesome. Okay. I'm guessing that needs to be put what manual. Says. Nice. Uh, yeah, so so a trophy from an animal you killed. Let's decide on, on what animal you would have killed in these northern uh, forest mountain areas. So well, you're something to be proud of, like a bear claw or something. You don't have to yeah, be yeah, sure. Like, you know, I don't want to carry like a lion's head around, but I don't know what they. Yeah, that would that would be kind of ridiculous. <laughs> so let's let's take a look. I have I have the uh, the whole monster manual with me right now. Let's oh, take a look about, at beasts. What about like a wolf skin or something like that? Sure, it could be a wolf pelt if you want it to be. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Let's say you like you killed a big old wolf. Uh, let me. I just want to see what other they classify these. If I can look at them, just like beasts. You're the devil, berserker. No, it doesn't really let me. But yeah, sure, go ahead. You have a wolf pelt. Okay, should I just tell you, want it, if you want it to be like one. the head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say it weighs five pounds. So, wolf pelt, and then weight. I guess I just click over here. <laughs> Couch Mom is sitting in the chat just spamming wolf, wolf, wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it kind of fits. Mm hmm. Okay, I love that. Okay. So now you have a wolf pelt, and decide, depending on how you want your guy to look, you can tell me how he wears this wolf pelt, but we're not going to do that now. I want, and CB, since you're in here, think about what your people look like. When we come in uh, for our first session and I describe how everyone is out on the road or in a tavern or however you guys have met, um, I want you to be able to tell me about your character and what they look like, and, and maybe they have certain distinguished scars or a wolf pelt that they wear on their head, or maybe they wrap it around their shoulders, something like that. Awesome. Okay, I love that. Cool. So now you have that. Let's go get the traveler's clothes, which is also in the compendium. Okay. Poor wolf. <laughs> the boy who shot it. <laughs> traveler's. Okay, I'm getting nothing under that. Oh, yeah, Traveler's Clothes. Yeah, it should be Traveler's Clothes. Yep. Got it, got it, got it, got it. It's a pretty basic one. Yeah, got it. 
You have a lot of items. I love it. <laughs> you have a lot of items. Okay, so got it. Traveler's clothes. Perfect. Um, I'm guessing the and barbarian then's just got like furry pants and long sword or So yeah, he could wear first up, but we've he's actually has a higher armor class if he just wears nothing. Right. He's just bare he's bare chested. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Pretty cool. awesome. Okay, so now we have that. Uh, you have your belt pouch caning, containing 10 GP. So where it says GP in the equipment, go ahead and type 10. You have 10 uh, gold. Oh, yeah. Look right. at that. You have yep. 10 gold. Um, perfect. Now this is now we're going to go do more features. So where we go to the features and traits, go ahead and hit that plus. Features and traits. Oh, yeah, plus, yep. Yep, so let's take a look at that. The name is feature. It's, called, it's just called Wanderer. Just type in Wanderer. Wanderer. Yep, and I'm guessing this is background. Right. Background. Source. And you're type, gonna type in Outlander. Outlander. I'm getting this now. I'm getting it. Yeah. Alright, cool. And... Perfect. And basically you're just gonna copy and paste what that says. Okay, let me just so, find the Wanderer thing. Oh yeah, feature Wanderer. Got it. You have a What what is really cool about this, and this helps your party immensely, is you can't get lost. After you've been somewhere. You physically cannot get lost after you've been somewhere outside. Awesome. It's crazy. Um, also, you can find food and fresh water for yourself and five other people every day. Perfect. Which means those rations and things that come in your, uh, your explorer's pack, yep. you might never have to use if you're outside. <laughs> so this is, this is exactly going how I wanted it, actually, for this character. So this is perfect. Perfect. Excellent. I love it. Uh, so now that's in there. You have Wander. Now you have Specialty. So we get to decide what do you specialize in. Um, I believe... Let me see if this, there's more detail in the book here for each of these things. Hermit, Noble, Outlander. You have an origin. Consider some of the distant lands you've been to, how they've impacted you. Uh, you can uh, decide what your occupation was, or maybe something that best fits your character. Were you okay. a forester, trapper, homesteader, a guide? Uh, just any any of these things to maybe think about what you might have been. Um, in this case, it doesn't have to be on this list. You can tell me what you think you have been as this wanderer. What was your job? What were you, what have you been doing? Yeah, I think for this guy, maybe a. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm thinking maybe like a, um, a scout, maybe or a tracker. So, like, say if there was sure. a village or somewhere where they lived, there may be, a, like, a, someone who, like, guards the, like, outer rims. So you're kind of like a tracker. Because elves are quite secretive, aren't they, anyway? So what you actually have is, like... Um, the, yeah, the wood elves in this case would be pretty secretive, yes. Yes. So if I make him say, like, a, an ex-scout, like a, a scout stroke tracker kind of thing. Uh, sure. So let's see. Uh, I mean, yeah, just put in, just put in scout. Okay. Your scout slash tracker. That works for me. So go um, put that in the... Uh, yeah, in go the ahead and put it in and features and, and traits. Yep. Okay, if I could just call it... I'll just call it um, scout tracker. Uh, yeah, call it call it uh, tribal scout. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Tribal scout. Got it. So you'd be... like, Let's say you'd be the guy that spots the tracks, you find where the beast was, and you protect your tribe from whatever beasts... Uh, were around it. So yeah. in this in this world, the way that this is set up, there are there are a mul obviously multiple types of elves. The the wood elves would be up in the north where you guys are starting your adventure in the woods that are just south of what are called the blades, which are these giant mountains that separate uh, the desert from the southlands where a lot of the humans live. Okay. Um, so you would be existing in these woods, and likely your your tribe would travel these woods. Uh, and you would, this is why it's your favorite terrain, this is why you don't like beasts, you hunt them so you can protect your tribe, and so the wood elves are more tribal in, than their cousins, the high elves, and the other types of elves. Uh, those elves, let me go ahead and bring up the other ones, yeah, so the high elves are going to be the ones that, they, they live to the southwest, on the coast of the world, and near the, where the, the rivers all meet together. And so they they utilize more magic, and they're more about trading with other um, 
like with other nations and things like that and accumulating wealth and magic and like that's kind of their whole deal. They're a really hoity toity bunch, right? Whereas the, the the wood elves are more they're these nomadic people that travel through the woods uh, on the very outside of these mountains and maybe they travel through the mountains and uh, they tend to keep to themselves mostly, right? They're just a mo- nomadic people. Uh, that, you know, maybe set up a couple villages here and there, but they're wood elves, right? They're not out to gain power or anything else. They're there and they commune with nature and they exist in that area. So as long as, as if that feels like something that you would yeah, fit in perfect. as. Awesome. Cool. So you already fit in with what the world I'm building sounds like, which is excellent. Um, cool. So that is that portion uh, we will call you the tribal scout. Yep. And so if it's, uh, let's say you play into something, like, let's say you're like, I want to track this certain thing. And then you, you tell me how you're going to track it. And you say, I was a tribal scout for my people. And I would track animals of this type. And I might say, okay, make a uh, survival roll with advantage, right? So you'd roll survival twice and we take the higher of the two numbers. Cool. All right. So do, do you want me to tap anything in the text at the bottom there just to outline that or? Uh, on your own time, I think as you we just discussed it. I don't think we need to type it in anything there now. But if you would like to add to that later, I wholeheartedly suggest it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so help. now, uh, oh, let's go ahead and do. You have some other bonuses as a wood elf. Uh, okay. so if you have the race tab still up, let's go ahead and go to that. Oh, you're yeah. fast too. Wow. Okay. Neat. You're actually five feet faster per turn than other people. Cool. So we'll go ahead and start with that on the top near initiative to the right of that, where it's speed and it's blank right now. Your speed is 35 feet. So just go ahead and put 35. And uh, let me just find that speed. Oh, it's blank at the minute. So, oh, God. yep. Go ahead and put 35. 56 then. <laughs> Couchbum is voting you as the leader. So, hey, good luck. <laughs> Surely Couch should be the leader if that's, uh, <laughs> if we're doing this. I, he's a, a wandering character. monk, maybe. He's a wandering monk. I don't know. You're the tracker. You might have to lead this party. <laughs> okay, so speed 35. Perfect. And so are you on the uh, the race page with the wood elves? Uh, I can be. I am now, yep. Okay, so oh, wait, now there's wood other elf. things. Oh, wood elf, yep. Sorry, got it, yep. Yep, no worries. Uh, so now just the same way we added everything to the features and traits, you're going to want to add dark vision, keen senses, Oh, wait, you already have keen... We, uh, you don't necessarily have to do keen senses because we've already marked it, but you're definitely going to want to mark nar- dark vision, fey ancestry, trance, and then we'll talk about languages. Right, okay, so dark vision... And this source will be racial. Yes, correct. Um, source type... What do you want to put for source type? Just uh, wood elf? Uh, yeah, exactly. Source type, wood elf. Okay, and then just copy that there. Yep. Control C. All right, this is cool. Because if we do this again in the future, we're all going to do this now, so we can kind of set our characters up, can't we? Um, yeah, I mean this this is the this is the point. I wanted to like get you guys accustomed to this, and because uh, the thing you have eleven hit points, a lucky crit on my side in any one of your battles might actually instantly kill you, and this character doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> So, as a heads up, level one is super dangerous. I'm not going to try to kill you guys outright right away. Obviously not. That would just be terrible. I'm not that kind of person. But you could instantaneously die. So, yeah, so that's what I've, what I've got to be careful. Well, I'm know, a ranger anyway, so hopefully we'll have the, the melee, melee class here. We're quite melee heavy anyway. Yes. You're also very, very fast. You can get out of places really quick. <laughs> And I've got yes. stealth. Permadeath exists, to CB. Oh, I love that. Yep. Okay. You can remain semi-conscious for four hours, which means you're really good at keeping watch, which is awesome. All right. So trans racial. What else? Tell me if any of these are wrong, by the way. I'm just adding. As you've shown uh, me. Yeah, no worries. I'm, I'm going to talk to my chat real quick. Duzin, uh, take a look at the new module that has just come out from Wizards of the Coast. Um, There is, it's, Essentially, everyone who's ever experienced death and then been revived by Revivify or any of the resurrection spells slowly starts to die anyways. There, there's a wasting sickness that's taking over the world, and anyone who's ever been resurrected is now dying. So death becomes permanent. So this is why the assumption is that death is more temporary and convenient. Maybe. In my world, 
more permanent than that. Um, Revivify might be something that we utilize, but a full resurrection spell might not be. Yep, okay. So you're going through all of your stuff. Yeah, I'm just putting these on now. I don't know if I needed languages, but I'm going to put it in anyway. Uh, no, no, no. So, so languages we can put elsewhere. This is what we're going to uh, do. Oh, okay. Let me take that off then. Yep. Um, so under other proficiencies and languages to the far left, same, uh, like directly opposite of features and traits, we can okay, go ahead and start putting in last, your languages. Last one in then. So I think I need, I've got fleet of thought. You've done that already. Uh, Mask yep. of the wild. So you can attempt to hide even when you are. Only You're going to want to add that one. Yeah, that that's, that's really on. good. This is that that's adding to that stealth thing. I'm gonna be you say, Well, I have Mask of the Wild. I'll be like, Oh, okay, roll stealth with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Mask of the Wild, awesome. And that's my wood elfiness. Yep, done. All right, they're all done now, I think. Yep, perfect. So now we go to the languages, which you only I think you only know two, and your yeah, background doesn't give you any more. Yeah, your background doesn't give you any more, which is fine. You know, common and elvish, which, which is, as a nomad elf, that's probably the only things you'd ever know. Yeah, I mean, where's... You might not even know common. Like, that's <laughs> that's how nomadic these people are. You might not even know common. So, think of it that way. So, where's the, um, where's the languages tab? Uh, if you click on the plus under proficiencies in languages, it pops up as language. Oh, yeah, there you go. And then type in uh, elven and common. And common, got it. Cool. Done. Um, other things that you have uh, under that other proficiencies in languages, go ahead and put in elf weapon training. So that will be a weapon uh, proficiency. Got it. And then... And you will have proficiency in longsword, shortsword, shortbow, and longbow. I mean, you already get this being a ranger, but just put it in there for, you know, just because we have it. Uh, okay, shall I just copy and paste that bit in that comes up, or shall I just put the long sword? Yeah, do you know what? You just put in long sword, uh, short sword, short bow, and long bow. Yeah, I'll just do it how you've done it. Uh, so proficiency, elf, weapon training. That is something that, so Oops. Dusan's mentioned in, in my chat, favorite beast, I don't think they talk much, but you're supposed to be able to know their language if you take them as your uh, favorite enemy. So I think that might actually just give you speak with beasts as a, like a spell that you just have. Okay, cool. Uh, so I, I'm going to, I'll look that up and uh, I will find out for you. Oh, let me just make sure I've put that in right because I don't feel I have. You also learn one language of your choice spoken by your favorite enemies if they speak one. All right, so they don't necessarily speak one. So you, you, you'll learn speak with animals eventually anyways. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's not something that we're going to have to do. Yeah, he gets nothing. Okay, help me with this one, the elf weapon training. It just comes up weapon proficiency. I'm doing something wrong there, I think. Uh, yeah, here, hang on. Let me go ahead and... Uh, I'm messing around with your stuff now. Yep, yeah, sure. Uh, so we want to change this to... Uh, long sword, short sword. Short bow and long bow. There we go. Oh, that's it. Cool. Yep. Yep, that works. Cool. All right. That is... Wow. You have Fae interest tree in there as well. Awesome. And your character is actually really good. I like it. Yeah, I like, like it a lot. You're pretty balanced, actually, which is nice. Um. Okay, cool. So let's go back to Outlander. And now we get to decide how your character interacts with the world around him. Okay. Okay. So... Back to the Outlanders, uh, the suggested character characteristics. You don't necessarily have to take these, but they try to, they're trying to guide you into uh, how would this Outlander elf interact with the people in the world around him. So okay. you have, under suggested characteristics, you have a personality trait. So uh, okay. maybe read through some of these and wh why, why are you wandering? Uh, why are you watching? Or wh what do you do? What is your personality as, as, as this elf? Um, so ran 25 miles without stopping to warm my... See, that might not be bad. Number three, uh, ran 25 miles without stopping to warm my clan of an approaching orc horde. I'd do it I again like if that. I had to. Because kind of... where, where well, you're at, there are orcs. The orcs yeah. live in those mountains. So I think that's actually really good. So go ahead and copy and paste that up into personality traits. That's top yeah. right of your sheet. So top right. So just like so. Yep. 
Exactly. Done. Perfect. Um, okay, so let's scroll down to an ideal. What is what is your ideal with the world? Ooh, I like these. Um, great, a good each. Right, is each person's responsibility to make the most happiness for the whole tribe? Yeah. Yeah, I think the honor one I might go for. Oh, but mind you, nature. The natural world is more important than all the constructs of civilizations. That would yeah. be a very tribal thing for your guy to believe. Yeah, that kind sure. of fits, doesn't it? I'm going to go with that one. So I'll go with the nature one for that one. Sure. Got it. Awesome. Now we go down to bonds. Okay, bonds... A family, clan, or tribe is the most important thing in my life, even when they are far from me. Well, that's winning for now. Um, yep, that's pretty good. <laughs> an injury to an unspoiled wilderness of my home is an injury to me. Oh, that's good as well. Um, terrible wrath, no. I'm the last of my tribe, and it is up to me to ensure their names enter legend. Oh. If you want to do that, sure. Is that the number I don't, one I don't or, mind. Is that the number huh? one or number four? I'm going to go for number four because it ties in with the honor one. So we Last of your like, tribe. Okay. Yeah. This is something I'm going to have to incorporate. Nice. So some catastrophe happened and he's trying to like make it right kind of thing. So let's, let's put it this way. How about this? You once ran 25 miles to yep. warn them of approaching orc horde. Maybe they died to the yeah. orc horde. Yeah, I think that's good. Because the orcs exist up there. But this, this you might want to think of now. If we're calling this... Uh, your whole tribe was killed to these orcs. Maybe your favored uh, enemy is an orc. That's what I'm thinking. What did I put it as before? Uh, you have beasts right now. Yeah, we need to change that, I think. Sure, go yeah, ahead. Go into favorite enemy. The star, so... And uh, let's go to orc. You also, so because you chose a humanoid, uh, orcs are humanoid, you get to choose two different Oh, ah, okay. Ones. So you can have orcs and like, let's say it was like orcs and goblins or something. So now you have orcs and goblins as your favorite enemy. So do I just change the, the beast bit at the top? Because it's the same, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Everything else is the same, but now it just, it's what it counts oh, as. So orcs and other humanoids. Yeah. What about tr um, goblins? Uh, yeah, I, I believe, yeah, goblins are humanoid. I'm, again, I'm pulling out the monster manual to make sure They'd that... They'd fight together, wouldn't they, a lot of the time, I'm guessing. They Trolls, would, yes. Orcs, in this goblins. world, they would. Uh, or uh, kobolds, either way. Goblins, uh, kobolds, they, and orcs. Is it... All right, goblins and kobolds are different in this world, aren't they? Yes, they are. I'm going to go goblins. Okay. Just like the name. All right, cool. I like, I like, yeah, goblins are <laughs> fucking cool. Orcs and goblins, got it. I can stomach gnolls, but not orcs and goblins. Got it. 166, yep, I'm going to make sure that we have everything. Uh, because now, um, because these, all of these speak a language. Um, so under your languages tab, you can add goblin and orc. Ah, okay. You now speak their language. So shall I add that to Elven? I've got Elven and Common. Yep, and then just go Common, or just go Comma, Goblin, and Comma, Orcish. Okay, it's not going to let me edit that, I don't think. Uh, it should, if you hit the cog wheel. Oh. And then if you go to Proficiency, where it's I'm all typed out. I'm just spamming it in the, <laughs> in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so go to the cog wheel. And yep. Click that. Oh, and then yeah. Where, where it says Elven it and Common, go ahead. It. And... Don't let me to it. Oh, yeah, I found it, I found it, I found it. Where it says proficiency. Elven, common, orcs and goblins speak different languages, yep. Kenny, welcome to the chat. Yes, orcs and goblins speak different languages. They are similar, uh, and they're also similar to dwarvish, but they do speak different languages. Got it. Elven, common, orc, and goblin. Isn't it only one language? Let me check that. Thank you, Q, for letting me know. Uh, let me make sure. Oops, I just deleted that tab because I'm a dummy. <laughs> There's so many tabs over here on my second monitor, it's ridiculous. Um, favorite enemy, you gain... Favorite enemies... Learn, ah, one language of your choice. Okay, so pick uh, goblin or orcish. Probably orcish. Okay, so... Um, hold on, hold on. So... Got it. Orc-ish, got it. Yep, done. Cool. Perfect. Thank you, Q. 
And I've added um, the floor in as well there about the slow to trust members because I'm guessing that was next. Yes, yes, it is. Sweet. Uh, other members of races, tribes, and societies. That makes sense as yep. an outlander. She's quite nomadic. It's go it's not goblin. It's goblinoid, which is a lot and counts as one enemy. Really, <laughs> interesting. Um. Okay. Uh. So that's Outlander. Let's go all the way to the bottom, and I believe that's all of those things. Wow. Okay. Cool. This is the uh, the basic setup. Oh, the last thing we can do here, and it we'll see if it actually matters or not. Let's go back to rules, the rules tab. Oh, um, let me go over. Yep. Um, and then we're rules going tab, to. Yep. Want to go to under character creation, go to alignment. Got it. Yep. So this is where we decide, I mean, what your alignment is. Generally, uh, you're probably maybe just normal neutral or you're either like neutral good or something. Yeah, I'd probably go, probably go, let's have a look. Neutral good, neutral evil, no. Yeah, I'd probably go neutral good. Do the best they can according to their needs. Yep. So form some cloud giants. Um, wait, 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 wait. Chaotic wait, wait. good is also falls under a good amount of elves as well. You not having a tribe that might chaotic good might be more up your alley. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. I like the thought of that. And it still counts as yeah, one human. Yeah. It says as well many elves oh, and unicorns. Hang on. Are chaotic good. Uh, Orcs aren't goblinoid, are they? Hey, I'm, I'm asking my chat here. Hang on. Yeah, sure. Orcs aren't goblinoid, are they? Just goblinoid is an option. I wonder if that's even in here as a thing that I. Hmm. <laughs> EFG. Orcs are their own subgenre of humanoid, as are goblinoids. Oh. Two subgenres under humanoid if you pick them as your favorite enemy. Interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, so just under your favorite enemy, just change it to goblinoid. Uh, and that's actually, oh, okay. that applies to a lot more enemies than uh, than just the goblins. Which is nice. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Sweet. So, favorite enemy, goblinoid. Yep. Perfect. Goblinoid. Got it. And that includes all the orcs and stuff. Yes. Uh, the orcs is, is your second one. That's actually a different subclass. So oh, orcs and good. goblinoids. All right, let me just Yeah, check. so it's orcs and goblinoids. Correct. One second. And that's something, if, if you're in a fight or something like that, or you think you're tracking a goblinoid or whatever, just let me know that this is still your favorite enemy and that kind of stuff, and I'll, I'll, we'll adjust the roles accordingly. Sure, got it. Uh, and I think... Jeez, let me take a look at all of this stuff. So I've got um, chaotic good at the top as well. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, yeah, this is kind of... Kind of it. If you go under the uh, the bio tab, I've, I've moved it over there already. Yep. If you want to type in any of these things that like a background or additional features of your character, sure. maybe what your tribe's name used to be or who you're associated with, and you want to add that kind of stuff, age, size, height, weight, I'm not going to limit you on any of that. You go put that in there. <laughs> right, okay. right. That's all on you. Okay, I can do um, that. And then the last small bit of homework for this is find a token... Uh, that you like. So if you go to Google and just type in, um, r or let's go Elf Ranger Roll 20 token, this is what will show up uh, on the map. So pick one that you kind of like, and then send it to me in Discord, and I will add it, and this is what you will look like on the map. Wow, okay. So I just click images there. I mean, is it just the yes, Roll 20 yes, yes, ones, yes. or...? Well, no, no, no. So the ones that have uh, all the watermarking and stuff, d preferably don't send me that because I'll have to get rid of the watermarking and ah, I don't right, want to do yeah. that. Uh, but like if you find a nice PNG or just a good JPEG and I'll, I'll remove the white space and things like that and uh, we can just use those. Ah, so you want like a top down. Yeah, exactly. So so the whole map, if you uh, if you exit out of your character sheet right now. Yep. 
Uh, you see there's two guys on the map right here. There's a little barbarian guy and a little uh, other dwarf guy here uh, that are just sitting on the map. I don't know if you can see it. Just... There should be just a small portion that is available to be seen to you. Yeah, I can see him. I can see him. There's a barbarian and like a dwarf, I think, there at the yep. minute. Yep, so this is, this is exactly, this is what it looks like. This is what your little token is going to look like. And you can zoom in and uh, get a little closer to him and that kind of stuff. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So you want me to send you that across? In... Just on Discord. I can do that now. That'll only take a second. Yep. Um, so whatever one uh, floats your fancy. Okay. So many have got watermarks on them, haven't they? Um... Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a few. <laughs> is it just like a standard ranger that's not got the... Oh, that one um, looks all right. There's one with a bow here. Right, hold on. I'll just uh, view image. As... All right, I might send you this. Uh, I might send you another one later, but for now, this will be a good placeholder, sure. I think. Sure. I like it. Let's do it. You can send me as many as you want. Just let me know which one you want. <laughs> Sure. So I'll send it to you. Oh, yeah, I've got your chat open still, yeah. Yeah, just, just send it on the, the DM chat. There you go. Perfect. Should do nice. That. Yeah, easy enough. All right, and that's, that is it. You now have a character. Sweet. There you go. Uh, let's see, is Rob on? No, he has been gone for a while. We did not finish his character, so we'll have to grab him sometime this week. But yeah, that's it. Um, so thanks, Latana. Uh, and that's about it for me. No worries. What uh, else do you need? Is there anything else you need me to add or to this? I I don't believe. So. If you want to add cool background stuff, uh, things that you might want me to include in the eventual campaign, do that. Uh, the yeah, more I'll... detail or the more things that you want to add, the better the story is going to be. Yes, yeah, so I'll just add stuff to the bio uh, during the week. Sure. So by the time we get there, but everything else is done. Um, yeah. Think. Th think about reasons why you would be joined up with these people. Think about why you 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 your your tribe is gone. You're wandering. Why did you join up with these guys on this certain mission they're on? Why are you over where the humans live? What 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 has made you come out of wandering? Okay. So, and what's the um? What other classes are they? What are the classes that are the other guys? We have a dwarf barbarian, a human monk, and a uh, gnome artificer. <laughs> it's a varied bunch. Okay, human monk. And what was the artificer? Sorry, that was a what race? He's was a that? he's a rock gnome. All right. Okay. I've never heard of a rock gnome. That's cool. Yep. So there's two. There's forest gnomes, much like different types of elves. There's forest gnomes and there's rock gnomes. Rock gnomes tend to live underground. Cool. Oh, they're not made of rock. They're not got like rock like skin then. They do have gray skin, yes. All right, cool. Right, got it. And now we've got an elf ranger as well in there. Yes, we do. Excellent. Perfect. And I think that's done. I'm going to go ahead and drop out of the call, Latana. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for appreciate that. being available. And oh, then do I have uh, we to will save this somewhere or will it auto save? It auto saves. Right, um, okay. as, as a note, I believe you have, everyone has video calling now. Yep, uh, yep. Does does Discord allow multiple video calls at the same time? Not certain if it does or not. Okay, that's what I wanted to find out. Otherwise, we're going to have to use Skype, which sucks, but we're going to use Skype. Okay, um, but we can, so, we can do a test, can't we, anyway, just before? Yes, uh, so it we will start the show at 7 p.m. my time. Uh, so if you can show up any time earlier than that. What's your then, time? Uh, Are you EDT? Yes, Eastern Daylight. Okay. EDT. And what day did we say? We said on uh... Wednesday. Okay. So Wednesday. So it'll be like Thursday morning for you, I think. Yeah, let me just check that because I might need to book that off. Your campaign working. tried using Discord and it wasn't great. Oh, for just video calling or did you use it for just voice? Because voice seems to work just fine. But Roll20's built-in video chat's pretty good. All right, we might use that then. All right, so 7 p.m. your time Thank is... You is oh god yeah god that's midnight my time so that's fine perfect but how long how long would we be looking at for play time just so i know about three hours yeah that's fine by me then that's fine awesome so that's excellent, excellent. 3 a.m yeah so uh, maybe about an hour beforehand i'll be on uh and looking at making sure everything is set up correctly yeah that's fine and that's we'll not... uh we'll start our adventure so 7 p.m edt which is midnight yeah. Um, BST. 
I'll have to make sure that stays because our clocks change pretty soon, but I don't think it's changed by then. Uh, yeah, ours do too. <laughs> I just I don't think it's this week though. So right, okay. I'm cool. pretty hopeful on that front. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, man. So EDT, so your Eastern Daylight Time. Correct. Yeah, so 7 p.m. is my midnight. I get on online probably between 11 and 12 anyway. So awesome. that works for me. Awesome. Sounds good. All right, so now I'm going to drop off this call, and I'm going to tell uh, CB, if you're still in the chat, get out of here. I'm going to start working on DM stuff, and uh, <laughs> don't tune in to... Do you guys want to test the video chat right now? CB, if you're available, yeah, we can try that. How to set it up with OBS? Yeah, okay. I mean, I, we can do that real quick. Um, so let's take a look at the options here in Roll20. I want to broadcast to others video and voice. I want to receive video and voice. Well, we could do just do video and we can just do all voice through Discord because Discord's voice codec is actually excellent. Um, so I kind of want to just try that. Let's try video only real quick. Oh, just come to rejoin the game. I'll just come out. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> uh, and let's see if I can... Chat tech, video bandwidth, clear okay, cool. control. So are you going to have all like, these backgrounds that were stood on at the minute? These are all like... These are just like gray tiles, but you can change all that. Oh, yeah. So you can only see the gray tiles currently, but there's actually like stuff around this. Um, wow. But I will have like full maps and we'll do we'll have dungeons and stuff like that. You won't be on a map all the time. Like if we're just wandering around in the woods or something like that, I'm not going to just have a yeah, map sure. for it. But like if you run into some enemies in the woods, sure, I'm going to have a map for that. Nice. Um, We'll, we'll have a most, I'm not going to say a full world map by Wednesday, but you will definitely have an area map that you'll be able to see about like where you are in relation to the, the mountains and some of the settlements around you. Cool. Uh, so you'll have to expand the map as you expand your quests and find out where everyone is and where you've been. A lot of you guys are really local to, to the actual area we're starting in, which is super neat, meaning that like a lot of, a lot of the characters haven't um, seen outside of their local scope ever. Uh, so I think, I think CB's character is the only one that's come from somewhere else. Nice. Uh, Couchbone, welcome to the chat. I come from the land down under. He does come <laughs> from the land down under. Um, so in, in that case, that's actually really cool that like maybe CB's only experienced anything to the south of where you guys are and no one's been west to visit the dwarves or the elves or anything like that. So, or the high elves, excuse me, since we have a wood elf now, I have to di differentiate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's cool. Let's see if we can't use the, um... Oh, the voice, ch their video chat here. I want to broadcast video. And I think then I, I enabled to it. Change, enable chat timestamps, enable. Hmm. I want to make sure that I can. Is it large? Okay, maybe it's large. Let's see if we can. Player video location. Um. Yeah, I've got. Video yeah, but is it, is it not broadcasting? Ah, huh. where is, why is it not l mm, accessing my video? Try reconnecting? Okay. Sure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and this. Sorry, you can't see everything. I'm talking <laughs> to chat. Um, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and, uh, and reconnect. Okay. Nice, CB. I like how you made your token already. That's really neat. Thank you. Thank you. Super cool. <laughs> How'd you uh, go into so that? How did you do that? Um, I went player. to just uh, my profile or something. I'm not seeing it right now, guys. Hang on. Uh, I think it's this one. There we go. I have so many Dungeons & Dragons like overlays and shit for the other show that I just clicked <laughs> through fucking all of them. There's a button in settings labeled reconnect. Oh, did I not see that? Uh, I see rejoin as player. There's reconnect. Ah, okay, let's see if this works. No? Currently clicking on it. It's not working. <laughs> mm, I guess I, I just want to know if it... Yeah, that is odd. Also, oh. welcome to the chat. Does Mars uh, Sama? Does Mars Sama? There we go. So on on I'm on Chrome. I don't know what uh, browser y'all are uh, using. Yes, I'm also on Chrome. On the top in the uh, the um, address bar on the right. Oh, it says it's stopping it from accessing it. Yep. Okay. 
Um, let's go ahead and allow done and then reconnect. Let's see if this works. Always allow, manage, done. It still says it's blocking though. Oh, let me refresh the page. I'm gonna change some shit, that's fine. Des is cool, awesome. Hey Des, welcome to the chat. Okay, let's go to settings. It says that it has access now. Can you guys see my face? Um, I cannot. Nope. Boo. Wonder what's going on. Huh. Interesting. Want to broadcast yeah. video? I moved to a uh, to Firefox with this one because permissions are easier to set. But yeah. I've just got same there. Use camera allowed. Use microphone. Yeah. Do you have it? Uh, so on your, do you have your video settings set for video? Yet? Yeah. Or yeah. Okay. And it's. Can you go to the settings and hit reconnect underneath those? So settings reconnect. Anti paladin. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. That's not doing anything. Huh. It's just like a good button. It it, it shows the animation of it clicking. Yeah, but it's yeah, yeah exactly. Do it's the button um, doesn't do anything. So I I opened my chat avatar and that's where my webcam is. Opened your chat avatar. Like on the in the settings, go down under reconnect and chat avatars. Yep. Mm -hmm. Player video avatar size. Right. I have it selected as large. Oh, do you? Mine's yeah. regular. I put mine in regular and I can see my webcam on the regular? screen. Man, oh, I'm right. not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Are you guys still? Are you seeing? Yeah, I've got list? the. I've got the same. I wonder if it's because I've got other. Ah, uh, right. I think. Let me just shut down OBS because I wonder if that's. Yeah, that might be why. Because oh, I'm, no. I'm not running OBS. Well, that would be weird. I don't want it. I want to be able to run OBS. That's the problem. But then um, two things would be accessing the same hardware. Yeah, and it might not yeah. work. Yeah, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't be able to see yours though. That's true. Um, I do notice that the the feed is not that great. So uh, there's a video bandwidth option down at the bottom. I'm not sure if that will Where help at all. Where is that at? I don't see that. It's all the way yeah, down at the bottom of settings under game settings. And then it says video audio chat options. Wait, game um, settings? No, I've not got that. I don't have that. Oh, that must be that must be exclusive to you. Maybe it is. Let me go ahead and pull this out over here. Okay, well, let's change it to this, and maybe that helps. And then it might have refreshed all of your pages. I'm not sure. No, I've got um, I've got no camera running now anyway, and it's still not. Yeah, it's not going. Hmm. Let me try the same thing in. Let me try Chrome. I'll just come out of this. Enabling Chrome. Um, allow camera, allow microphone. Again, let me just go ahead and do this. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. It's worked. Oh, okay. yeah. I see oh, the yeah. now. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. slow, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see relatively. Man, I still can't see you guys. <laughs> it's yeah, it's probably because other. OBS is using your webcam. Oh, that's not ideal. Let me try open OBS as well. See if the, see if there's a conflict. If it stays, yeah. Yeah. Well, it would it would uh it would tell OBS that you can't use the webcam. 
or um, should since it's already being used. Something like that. Yeah, it's not it's not letting it's not showing the webcam on my OBS. Damn. Okay. Oh wait, so wait, wait, wait. I think it is actually. Hold on. Do we need the webcam for the game? No, I I, I wanted it for the show. This, I mean, I'm streaming this. It's a show. I'd I'd like to include some face cam. Sure. So, I'd rather not download Skype. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. I, but, I mean, uh, I yeah, we can hear you, Relly. Really. It's just it echoes. Oh, I can't. Oh, hear now him. it's not. I can't hear him at all. Yeah, wait. Why can't I hear him? <laughs> Okay. Um, shoot, how do I make this work? Does um, did y'all want to test out the the Discord video? Okay, let's see. There we go. Hey, hey there he is. Okay. I'll okay. So on let's my... see if we can't. So it's not going to work if I have OBS up. That's pretty clear. I can tell now. That's not. Definitely doesn't want to let me do that. So I think in this case, as much as I don't want to use this, I think Skype might be the best option, unless Discord lets you multi-channel call. Okay, I've got a lot uh, of echo at a minute. Uh, from me, or? Yeah. Uh, make sure you're only transmit or receiving video rather than voice as well in Roll20. Um, yeah, good call, actually. Um... So video only, video only. Reconnect. Yeah, that should be better now. Cool. Saying that though, now I can't hear. I can't hear really in the website, but I should be able to hear him on the Discord, right? Hopefully, he yeah. says a couple words. Yeah, I got it. I think. Hmm. See, I can't hear him in Discord. Is he in the Discord? I'm joining a call. Let's see if this works, CB. Uh, you have to turn on your camera also. It is currently on. Oh, there we go. Maybe this works? Uh... It's not coming up on my side. Someone in my chat does this thing. From what I understand, OBS can work in conjunction with Roll20. You just need to have Roll20 working first. I gotcha. I added Latana to the uh, call as well. So it looks like it's loading. But, yeah, uh, but it's not, not bringing up the webcam. If I can't. So if I close this. Turn off. Turn on. There it is. Oh, yeah. there's you. It's 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 a conflict on the uh roll twenty. Oh, oh, okay. So let's see if I if I can turn that off then. I don't know if it's gonna conflict with uh OBS or not, because I don't have that running. I suppose we'll find out. Oh, so so far I'm not popping up, so let's see if I can um I'm going to go dark screen here. Let's go to webcam and turn this off. Yeah. For some reason, that's still Have you got the Logitech on. software running? Because I had to turn that off as well. Uh, I shouldn't have it on. No, it's, it doesn't say it's on. OBS is just a uh, hardware hog. It's, that's true. Luckily, that's one thing I have at least some accessibility for. All right. All right. Testing. So, all right. So we're disconnecting in the roll twenty now. Then I, uh, that's what I I've I've to tried to do. Know. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this page. Well, I, I had to sure. because it was using my webcam. I can go back now. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So I just so, put nothing. Disable that. God. Right. Okay. All right. So I go back to a picture, and then in Discord. Should come up there now. God, my webcam's so confused. 
<laughs> All right. Yeah, that's just not happening there. Why is that? And now I'm alone. <laughs> well, I should still be there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we can still hear you, bro. There, I added him to the uh, call as well. <laughs> okay. Mine's just got a loading circle. It's not actually loading, though. Yeah, same. I'm not sure if that's... I think... Hmm. Do y'all have y'all's camera set up in the settings and everything? Yeah, yeah. In here, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going through the settings again just to make sure. I keep hitting test video, and I'm not, I'm not getting anything. I think OBS is like messing with it. I see real. Hey. Uh, there you go. Oh, that's interesting. Nice. That's two. There we go. I wonder if we can get these. <clears throat> can you actually hear me? I can hear you. Yep. Good. And I don't have to worry about it so much. Okay, let me just try my settings. Latana and I are still in the dark. It's fine. <laughs> fine. Let's see if I add, if I start up OBS, it's probably not going to work. Which is okay. a pain for what you want. Thanks for following, Des. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to. Because if if OBS. OBS can work in conjunction with Roll20. You just need to have Roll20 working first. Oh, uh, but I don't want to turn off OBS right now. That's my problem. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay. Properties. Filters. So to be fair, I mean, the, the video quality on this isn't terrible. This is pretty... This is all right. I can accept this. Because the voice, the voice quality stays pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is a bit nuts because in the test... I've just done a test video in Discord. It works fine. Try, uh, let's see if you can uh, disconnect and reconnect to Discord itself and maybe pop back in. <clears throat> I might have to try that as well. Hey, there, there's yeah, there he is. There right, he is. Good. So can you still hear Perfect. me now? Yes. Ah, even better. Do you cool. have... Did you uh, disconnect or what did you yeah, do? Yeah, I just, I went to the settings. Uh, I used, ran a test call. There's like a test okay. video button. Yeah. Uh, it worked straight away. Then I just disconnected, reconnected. And that's it. Okay. Uh, let's try... You don't scale but... your camera down, though. You can see all my... There you go. That's my front. Yeah, camera. yeah. It doesn't scale it down <laughs> at all. Do you, do you have uh, OBS running, though, at the same time? Uh, no, but I'm going to try. See, that's that's my thing. I, I ran, yeah, I, I I ran it, and I don't... My, my webcam's not popping up on there. Yeah, mine's... Uh, on OBS? The, box, so the red box comes up, but that's it. Okay, but so, so this, is, this is still an option. So this is the thing. So if I... It's not an option there, but can you do a, you can do a screen capture for this and yeah. just capture the, the Discord screen and it would show whatever your, yeah, you could do, you could do that. You could just do, you could even do multiple screen captures of certain locations and scale them down. So you could even scale down from the backgrounds and stuff like that. Yeah, that would I think that yeah, might work. The only work. thing I would think was, would be a problem would be syncing. E yeah, but it should be synced through Discord. So, but you uh, should be yeah, able to learn on the stream, though, isn't it? Our chats, I'm, uh, at least. possibly, yeah, yeah, you, it'd be a little bit behind. Yes, I feel like it would be, it'd probably be a little bit behind. Let's see if I can. So, I have this Discord stream kit that I might be able to use for this status chat. Oh, it doesn't have stupid video calling yet. Hmm. Hey, that's weird though. If I go into another room, another chat room, for example, I can still see uh, Rel's camera. Yeah, you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, every time I go to settings, I can still see Rel in the bottom corner. It's like, all right, well, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting. So OBS is being a dick, essentially. All right, cool. He's always like that. <laughs> so let's see. That's how we built. <clears throat> So let's see, window capture. Let's see if Google has experienced this. Let's see if I can't do this with a filter. Let's 
Let's see, top. 100. Yeah, good. Left. So you just it says that uh it's not an option on OBS but you still you can still run OBS is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I've still got desktop um, capture and game capture that still works. Cool. It's just Let's the see. Cam. All right. Oh, that's too much. You'd think in 2017 they could put webcams in two or three different places on Windows. You'd think all right, night, dudes. Right, Thanks for coming out, dude. Uh, Five hundred. Hey, that's nice. So let's see if um, I might just disconnect here and see what happens. Oh.